Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Income Gaming, Cheltenham's premier friendly local game store. Check the link in the description. Hello, welcome to episode 17 of the Hobby Hour with myself, Stu, and my good friend, Dan. Dan, how's it going? Yeah, not bad, thank you. Not bad. It's been a, it's been a long day. We're a little later to start than we normally would be, so uh, I pre warn people. Obviously, the glasses are out, and I may yawn at some point, so don't hold it against me. It's been a long day. <laughs> I'm sure there will be plenty of Stu monologues for you to yawn along to. Um, it's part, partly my fault that we're uh, starting a little bit later. My, uh, my wife's away at the moment with work in Barcelona poor her um doing doing lots of nice non-worky things because it's a conference and they don't do any work um and so <laughs> we're starting a little bit later anyway so i have to make sure the kids are asleep um and then i've been playing around with my new computer getting it set up but on also trying to save some time at the other end of this rather than editing this so if things have gone well um the overlay and everything on this will look a little bit different and i've recorded it not only through zoom but also through obs so i can kind of do the live pictures, add in the picture, like when I did a live stream for the last episode. Um, it got me thinking that it was nice to be able to have the web pages up and add the images as we talk about it rather than putting it all in post. Um, so I'm hoping that that's going to work. So even though we're not live to you, we are live to us and everything we do will be at the same time. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. So um, I suppose... I'm trying to think what we our last one was a live one so it felt a little bit different yes. it still feels like it was a, a long time since we've kind of chatted in in, in that sense for earlier really. but what we're going to do is it's going to be a very kind of laid back chatty kind of episode the the main topic isn't really a main topic it's just an expansion of the news we want to talk a little bit about the the kind of the, the miniatures that are being removed from from aos um partly with an old world sort of view on it and interest but we think it's an interesting topic anyway so that's part of the news but we'll save that for for later on but we're gonna go through talk a little bit about other bits of news things that we're interested in always we're not trying to do a new show so if you're new to it and you wonder why we don't mention certain things it's just things that are kind of news to us and if you're regular viewers of this or the channel you'll probably be familiar with those kind of things we'll talk about our own hobby what we've been up to we've both been busy i think in one way or another You've been busy for you, Dan. You've been busy. You give picks and troughs. You've been you've been busy enough. Um, and then yeah, and then we'll we'll, we'll talk. A, you know, del delve back into that news. And it's you know, there's a lot going on at Games Workshop at the moment because of AOS four and lots of other things going on. So lots mm. of the stuff we've been talking about recently. So let's start off with the, the first bit of hobby news. So as we're recording this, it's Tuesday the 9th of April. Um, and I'm hoping in this you'll be watching this if you're watching in his first day on the 10th of, of April on the Wednesday. That's my plan. Um, but <laughs> Octon Mayo, we'll see. Octon no Panzer is out this week. Um, is it Salute this weekend? Salute this Saturday. It is this it? weekend. Yes. So I otherwise... literally saw War Games Illustrated put something slightly earlier. Oh, and I think Darren Latham had his uh, entry paper on his feed earlier. Oh, so he nice. He put the model in for Salute this oh. weekend, which basically means you're all stuffed. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's good. That's good. Um, so yeah, salute this weekend. Are you going still? You're going, weren't you? You still going? Oh, we well, we did discuss it, didn't we? But um, no, I no, thought you were going um, anyway. I know I couldn't in the end, especially because the wife's only back on Friday, Friday evening, and and yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it was a, it was a nice idea, but I'm I'm trying to be good this month, if I'm honest with you, uh, money wise. So um, no, the uh, we will soon see that's gone slightly uh <laughs> i'm doing better than i kind of uh better than i feared and worse than i hoped should right. we say right. but yes i won't be there fair enough fair enough i know quite a few people watching this will be going or or have been depending on when they've watched it um and i'd, I'd, I'd like to oh, i'm going to try to go next year because i missed two now i went a couple of years ago with i think we with, should with try son. yeah I, I i i i it's very close to where easter fell this time round. Um, and I knew Emma was away for this because this was booked in years ago. Um, so every two years they do 
her work to a, a global conference now. Um, it's, it's she's she's we, we we all went to Florida two years ago as a family because she managed to tack our holiday onto it, our family holiday onto it, which was nice. Um, and then the, the, I can't remember where she went the year before that. But when I worked for the company that she works for many many years ago, my one slot, my chance of going to the global conference. Right. Can you guess where it was, Dan? So the previous two years before I was in a position where I got to go were Chicago, then Sydney, which were quite cool. Margate. No, no. <laughs> a, bit fur- a bit further north. Blackpool. Glasgow. Ooh. And it's lovely. Yeah, I, I like Glasgow. It's fine. <laughs> but Glasgow is a brilliant city, but I don't think it stands shoulder to shoulder with the others i mean if you come from chicago or from sydney it might be quite cool to go to glasgow i suppose and it is a global conference but uh in, in, it could be an experience in, in, the, in the years since then it's gone back to um where did it go to it's been to i think it went back to chicago again um it's been to florida twice and now to barcelona so if you look at the last god knows how many years i think i Got a little bit unlucky. But anyway, we're not here to talk about my jealousy around that, but that's partly the reason why I couldn't, Salute was just a, a no-go. But anyway, so Salute's happening. Octon Panzer is releasing at Salute. Um, people should be you know, their, their pre-orders are shipping. Um, I've done a video already on it, um, painting a Humber. Warlord very kindly sent me out stuff quite a, quite a few weeks ago now. And I've had a set of the rules for a while as well. But just a PDF set, but um, um, and it looks quite an interesting game. It's very... Very granular, um, um, looks it, but um, but 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 good fun, I think. Um, and I've, I've got another tutorial out. Hopefully this week should go well, and then with it probably a little video. I might even do it as a short, just showing the whole British set off um, with a few headlines for it. But I haven't had a chance to play any games, and those channels out there doing really good reviews. And I've, I can't really do an unboxing because I've not had a box. If that makes sense, I got it before any of it was printed, so I just had all the tanks sent in their normal. Um, bolt action sets and I had the cards sent through the big multi-nation card packs all the cards they make have had all that sent through um, and some channels have done very good jobs showing off all the cards but I was planning on doing some kind of unboxing style thing but they haven't sent me the actual starter set so there's no point mm-hmm. in me just showing what I've, I've I've painted so I might might change what I do there but I, yeah, definitely be another tutorial and I'll do a little video or something or other showing the British force painted and then just showing off some of the, the cards of my a very quick thoughts on, on the game but it looks exciting and it looks good fun um, it's really it's a, it's a skirmish game really it's a tank skirmish game low model count if you don't like painting infantry like painting tanks go for it if you want to buy it um there's a i've got my warlord games affiliate link i'll try to remember to pop it in the video description there we go do my little sales pitch there um what else has happened orcs and goblins launched for yep. old world so we had the pre-order um always feels a bit flat i was talking to jordan about this a little bit and you a little bit as well about um the excitement seems to be i didn't realize this because the excitement for for old world built up to a crescendo in in january um and as all the videos i've been doing got watched loads but then it feels like now the excitement is from when an army is announced up until pre-order day past pre-order day it kind of drops mm. off a little bit um so it felt that's probably because people don't expect to get their pre-order this time this century well i think that's got something to do with it i think it's that it's shocking how bad it is at the moment and it's, it's they've changed great. their terms and conditions recently actually have they yeah it's um basically i don't like being cynical and i don't think necessarily it's led out of uh any attempt to absolve themselves of any responsibility but i think it's more to manage people's expectations within the situation they found themselves in yeah i don't think they're making excuses i think they're just saying that this is a reality mm-hmm. which in itself is disappointing i yeah. do remember the days of you could order stuff from gw and get it a couple of days later and all that yeah. kind of stuff and in a world where amazon's delivering stuff next working day sometimes same working day depending on where you are it's a bit rough you know, pre it's hard to justify giving your money to GW at the moment when the amount of things I've bought pre-ordered mm. them and I'll get them multiple days after people yeah. have bought them in the shop. And I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Oh, funny enough, I've been talking a little bit. I'll, I'll circle back to 
the back the, the launch that in a minute but this is all all kind of linked quite nicely up. I was chatting to one of my patrons today in, in discord we chat quite a lot and um we're talking about amazon and the convenience of it um but then mm. also so i ordered the, the orcs and goblins arcane journal that's all i ordered for, for that set because i don't collect the army i'd yeah. produce two three i suppose you include the giant painting videos um i wasn't going to paint anything else i'd, I'd I don't think the new um, sorcerer's out. The um, the shaman, sorry, I don't think the shaman's out. No. So that if that that would have been added potentially because the miniature looks great. So I might I might get that to paint. But yeah. the the war boss is lovely. But I wasn't going to spend money on it just just to paint it. And Jacob has got more than enough orcs and goblins that um, he didn't need that treat. I bought him the book, but um, he didn't need that treat. Um, so I just bought the book. Um, and to be fair to Games Workshop. Um, for the Orcs and Goblins book and the Wave 2 Bretts, I've got my Foot Knights and I've got the Questing Knights sitting behind me in a box over there. Um, they did all ship the day before, so on the Friday before release day, which is, that hasn't done that for a long time for any of their pre-orders, for me mm. anyway. So it felt a little bit more like they were 12 months or 18 months ago with that. So that feels like an improvement. Um, but of course, because they they only pay 48-hour business class shipping with royal mail whereas element games do 24 hour you don't get it till monday so my arcane journal turned up on monday now i ordered one from gw and one from element games you you can probably guess who won the race um so well, element um, games delivered it on launch day for me um so i had it to look at on launch day um and then on monday my son's arrived and he got his um it's and i purely did it that way partly spread betting because i've not 100 percent confident that they won't oversell at gw now and then you get that nasty email um and then the other side of it was i didn't know like i wanted two arcane journals i didn't know if they're going to put a limit on i didn't want to spend ages putting two in my basket trying to check out then it says no then i have to go back and then they sold so i just bought one quick bang then went over to element and bought one quick bang but i agree they should they for well, a start i the, went the, into my local train shop who stock gw yeah. on sunday and they had them yeah. I don't know. People haven't got them now. Mad. When I was Tuesday, mad. Uh, yeah. And the amount of stuff that I've ordered from, I mean, some stuff that's turned up, which we'll discuss in a bit, took nearly two weeks. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely taken a while. They, these, these are the, I mean, they're pre-orders, so I'm not sure. What did I last order from them direct? Um, I don't know. I don't know. It definitely seems to be more like a. If I order something that's showing in stock. Well, you can only order stuff that's in stock, but if it feels like yeah. it's going to be a five day minimum. Yeah, I think Whereas my Pravian took eight days. I mean, I wasn't that bothered I wasn't even in the country, but it's, yeah. that's a bit of a joke considering because it wasn't 40 quid, I had to pay postage on it. Yeah. And, you know, that was that's quite a lot of postage for not turning up for over a week. Yeah. I mean, I know they say, oh, it's you're paying for the postage after they ship it. Well, do it faster. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I, I, I don't know why they don't do 24-hour business for a start. So the 24-hour the mm. business, so when when I sell on eBay, I appreciate you can't really compare these. I'm not talking about myself as an operator. When I sell on eBay, I use 48-hour um, rec- tract most of the time. But the difference between yeah. 24 and 48-hour tract is about 50p. So... Yeah. If there was any delay for any reason, I will just buy the the first class, and sometimes I will send it quicker. Um, and they're pretty good, and it's business. You could think they call it business tracks anyway. It's really really good. You get some, you get a decent amount of cover included. I think it's about two hundred pounds included. Yeah. Now they're not paying fifty p difference between them choosing no. to, the 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 deal that fractions. they have. You know, yeah, it's fractions per parcel. I appreciate fractions is not with the size of the contract they're going to have with the post office. The sort of the contract they have is gonna that's going to look like a big saving on a PL somewhere. Um, but but sometimes, especially if you're in a situation where you're struggling in the warehouse to process the orders, so it's taking longer to get them out. Maybe just try and cut that down at the other end. Um, I keep the customers happier. But, um, oh, yeah, if I can get something from, it tends to be Element, but um, Goblin Game, there's lots of good ones out there that will ship the sort of almost the same day. Element make a thing out of it. Um, Wayland, I know people don't like Wayland. Wayland have got very good now, but it's in stock. It tends to take three days, you'll get it. And um, I actually, I did order from them recently, didn't I? Uh, I took the punt. And despite everything I've said about them in the past, I have to, 
I can't fault them recently. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I've ordered two things in the last two days. I had one of them's already shipped and I ordered it this morning. Yeah. Yeah. That's and really I know good. that they're a, um, a smaller company, but even so. Yeah, you know, Wayland and and Element and Goblin Gaming all very good, and there will be other good Dark ones. Sphere well. are fantastic as well. Um, Firestorm Games are always pretty good. They're not quite as quick. They're more of a sort of take two or three days to, to ship, but they used to be. I don't. They might have, again. I haven't. That's the thing. I'm really like many people. I'm really impatient. So as soon as um, I want, to, it'll sit in a box as well. It's completely ridiculous. But as soon as I've got my head, I want something. Um, I will quite often will go for the store that advertises the same day dispatched. Um, and even if that means it's a quid more or something, sometimes I will be tempted into that. Just so, so there you go. Yeah. There, there's a lesson for you in a, in an Amazon age, GW. There's a lesson for you. Um, if you forty eight hour is fine if you can ship as quick as you used to two or three years ago, but they obviously struggle. Uh, I've got no doubt that people working in those warehouses are working really hard trying to get those orders out so it's not a dig at anyone if there's anyone watching this who, who works in those i know what it's like working for businesses where people make complaints about your job well, publicly um it, it doesn't make you feel good reddit's um, covered this quite a great deal it's not the people who work in it it's the fact that gw refused to pay the going rate for developers to sort out their system mm -hmm. and wanted to try and bolt on something onto a system they should have replaced mm -hmm. that's the scuttlebutt that's i mean no, no official uh, yeah i've heard a few that's diff basically I've heard some different uh, things from, as well but yeah from seven or eight and i actually knew someone who did apply to go and work on the task which would eventually have been that and they weren't willing to pay him what he was worth so they they interesting cheaped out interesting i've been told some other things as well recently but we'll talk about it offline um, <laughs> so i'm not sure i'm allowed to say um, not from not from anyone that works at, at games workshop but it's um i don't want to put anyone's foot in front of it but um very anyway that was a really long tangent and we're only on to like the third thing on the list we're trying to speed up but yeah also awesome goblins out felt like it's the people are still excited for, for the old world but it feels like as soon as the the actual launch day people are right next 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 and I, the timing for the last two announcements so launch day for the whole game orcs and goblins get announced on launch day and then people are already excited about that brilliant a couple of days before the pre-order for the orcs went up purely because of the timing of adepticon dwarven mountain holds are announced so then it feels like the people shift on to the next thing and i and i can't help but wonder if we're going to have the announcement for whatever the next army is either on launch day of, of of Dwarves or even before the actual launch day, hopefully not before the pre-order day, because, again, I think that potentially yeah. limits says I think, it, I don't know, I think it could hurt their sales, couldn't it? People are like, oh, I'm going to wait now for the next one. Potentially. Um, I, they, yeah. But they've got, to, they've got so many games and so much to announce, they've got to find a way to do it at some point. But it does, I quite like on the, to do it on the actual launch day of the faction is a cool thing. So not only, so those people who aren't interested in the army that's launching that day are excited to find out what the next one's going to be. Um, yeah. I, I think that's quite a nice thing. So it worked well on overall launch day. I wonder if um, Dwarves would have been announced in the same way if it wasn't for the Adepticon re reveal, which just by nature of it fell three or four days early but anyway orcs and goblins looks exciting one um, thing i did notice though just i mean you may have seen differently because i haven't been on social media as much mm -hmm. recently which is probably a good thing i don't think they sent out orc and goblin battalion boxes to as many influencers as they did the army boxes for kemri and um bretonia i haven't seen as much of it no i wouldn't have expected them to um, obviously, I, no, am, but, I haven't got one. Um, but um, but I, mean, I, I, let, let's, yeah, I wouldn't I have expected. This is, this is two subject, two but... were the launch boxes, <laughs> were, you know, the actual launch boxes, um, whereas these are army boxes, aren't they? They're the same, same as before. Thought, I mean, they, they, send people, any, they send any old stick, any mm. old box. It seems like you've got people who've, you know... Or maybe they have sent them we, and people aren't doing anything with it as well. There is that possibility, but that's a shame because there's probably people who could do something with it, isn't well, there? Well, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I'm, let's, I'm... let's let's leave that topic alone. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I wouldn't mind them sending me stuff, but I don't, yeah, I don't see that. I don't think that's going to happen. But you know what? If they uh, if they sent me the right models, I'd happily paint some. But uh, I don't have enough of a following. I don't think anyway. I think you, you might do on Instagram. You're. Um... 
Uh, used to be more, well. used to used to be way more way 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 more money. But anyway, that's a different story. But I don't yeah, we I don't think we're likely to be sent them anytime soon. No. And I do wonder because that box probably wasn't that well received in terms of its content as contents. It didn't have much it didn't have any new in it. That's why No, well, none, none of them none of them gonna have anything new in it, but the dwarf one, and, and again you've probably not been over this as much as me because I'm a big dwarf fan. The contents of the dwarf box has actually been quite well received. People are generally saying, mm. you know, it's a useful box. They didn't just stick cannons in. They put the gyrocopters that you can really build an army around that. Um, it's useful mm. things. Um, if you, you know, uh, you, people need warriors, even if you don't, you need long beards and you can use those as long beards if you wanted. Quarrelers and thunderers are good. Gyrocopters are good. You're going to use, even if you just use the gyrocopters, they were, they'd retail at like 35. Yeah. Uh, 70 for those two. I'm assuming they'll be a similar price. Um, and then a box of, they're probably going to change the numbers, aren't they? But a box of quarrelers or thunders on top of that. And you're getting your warriors for free almost. So uh, whatever price they do it at, I'm guessing it's going to be 100 again. I think it's a good value way into the army. And I'm at risk of repeating a video, a long video I did on it already. And our live stream when we talked about the, the dwarf release. But mm. I think that's a good one. I think the Orcs and Goblins one is a nice idea. But their idea for the Orcs and Goblins doesn't match the rules. Because the rules tell you that night goblins and fanatics are good. That box and all the imagery around the orcs and goblins releases. Standard orcs and goblins. This is, you know, those savage hordes. I love that look for orcs and goblins. But they needed to have probably not made fanatics quite as good in the rules and made the sneaky, the sneaky gits made them better so that the, the vanilla goblins sold more. But what you had was a box that no one really wanted because people just wanted to go buy night goblins and have fanatics because that's the the most competitive that option and people love them play play dan and whistle because that boy we, we smashed that as we'll cover later uh using normal boys if you play them right and use the right stuff i think I'm it's not, i'm not subtle. saying i'm not saying they're not competitive um mm. and especially with a good player and, and dan is a good player at games he plays isn't he no matter what yeah. it happens to be he's he's he's, but, he's he's a successful gamer in terms of playing not uh, not like me at all. Well, nobody gave the army to me, and even I could do it. <laughs> so uh... I, I, they're not they're not bad, but I think um, had you, you know, if, if, I think fanatics are good. Don't get me, you know. I think mm. that, I think I don't think it's I don't think anyone's going to argue that they're night goblins with fanatics and the way fanatics work now are, are quite a, a strong option. And it's not just on paper now. People are people have been using them and, uh, and they find them to be quite good. So, yeah. Um, so, I'm, yeah, it's not saying that it's bad, but I think if that box was Night Goblin, I know reason we, we know we know why they've not brought out the Night Goblins yet. We, we can work it out. We can guess this because of the, the slightly separating it IP-wise from, from AOS maybe. But if that box was Night Goblins, um, I reckon it would have, people would be more excited about it. But um, I don't think it's sold out either, is it? Don't no, think it has. Think so. Lots of the other stuff has, all the returning metals and things, but I don't think that box actually sold out. So I do wonder whether, um, yeah, people are just going different routes for it. again. Like the, it just the, the stuff that's in now aren't necessarily what people are. People are taking black orcs, people are taking mm. night goblins in their armies at the moment. It might well change. Maybe that is the best stuff, and people just haven't realised yet. We're so early in the meta. Um, but anyway, orcs and goblins are out. They're great. I love them. I'm not painting them anymore. I'm not doing any more content for them as it stands because I don't have an army for them myself. I may pick up that that shaman when it comes out. We will we will see. Um, and then what else? We've got um, the FAQ came out today, didn't it? So we we yeah, haven't about four or five hours ago. Yeah. So we we haven't had a chance to go through this, um, and that is not the page that I wanted right now. But. Um, Go back to the the right, the correct tab. Um, so we have an FAQ, um, which um, there's lots of stuff on there, um, as far as I'm aware. Lots of lots of magenta. So lots of changes from that little initial one. Um, I think we're talking about twelve pages. So we this came out tea time as I was cooking for the kids and I had a quick flick through. Realised there was way too much. That was eight pages. We'll let them off there. Realised it was just way too much for me to kind of take in. Um, I don't know how much we got on the forces of fantasy. Not so much on on the actual forces books. And they've gone and updated all of the um, legacy lists as well, covering off a few little mistakes. I think that were there. 
um, which will annoy all the Including people. A really big one about not seeing people use them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably not that. Um, no. but I I don't know what they yeah I don't know what they've changed with those. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, all those people that went out and got those books printed, um, the combined books, um, are going to be a little bit annoyed. No, they got no not with GW, just it at the fact that they've gone and got those books printed. Um, I think they're great. I don't mind saying it. I I think that um, those. Uh, have you seen them, Dan? The compiled, combined lists. So people, oh, yeah, people have done yeah, yeah. has taken all of the. Yeah. They're not doing all they're doing is, is stuff they're allowed to, to to use for themselves. They're not selling them. I'm sure some people are somewhere, but they're so just exactly. compiling all the PDFs that the Legacy Army. Oh, they probably and, should be miffed at GW if they were told we're not touching these again. These are yours to think, play with if you want to, and then they've done it. It's a bit yeah, like, but well, it's, it's not know. GW's responsibility whether someone goes away, spends money getting it printed. Um, I, I I haven't got around to it yet. I was going to, and I'm glad I didn't now. So I need to wait for someone to come along and compile them all again, and stick them and do the artwork and stuff for it. And then I'll uh, then I'll, I probably will get it done because I thought it's a nice thing to own. Print self print. Um, cost about fifty quid to get in hardbacks. So it's not cheap, but it's a nice thing to own. But I, I'm glad I didn't. I nearly did it last month, and I'm glad I didn't. Now they've gone and adjusted those um but again that's not uh, they're not official but as long as you're not selling them i don't think you'll if you can it printed for yourself i'm pretty sure it will say on those documents that for personal use you can print them um so yeah um, i don't think that's breaking any rules apologies if it is um miniature realms and um hobby hour does not endorse piracy in any way <laughs> print them for yourselves only use them yourselves um except proper buccaneering do that as much as you like. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. If, you, if you've got a ship, um, um, you're, you're fine. Um, and then we have the new Skaven. So. Which are great. Um, yeah, very very good. Not as big as we hypothesised, because you're probably showing a picture of it now. I can't. I'm, for for I'm, those at home, I can't see what I, he's I'm doing. I'm not yet, no. Um, I was um, just going to make sure I've got the right thing up first before we do it. But uh, um, are these the new Skaven ones? And that's the what's leaving. That's the other bit. So the Skaven clan rats. So, yeah, that, well, I think the first image came out the other night, didn't it? Maybe on the Facebook page, I think. Um, uh, yeah, Walcott, Walcom or Facebook. One of the two had it. Uh, and obviously, he's, when did they put the, was it Sunday morning they put the clan rats thing up? Yeah, that's what it was. I think it was just this image now. So the image I've got on, on the screen now, Dan, is the, the image of the three. So you've got the what looks like the storm vermin ish equip, equipped one mm. in the middle. The guy with the banner and the and they're just the normal the normal clan rat. Um, yeah, it was the week as I, I, it was shared in in in, in the Discord um, for Miniature Realm. So that's where I first saw it, I think. Um, and and the, I shared it to you and Jordan almost immediately, saying they look amazing. But I bet you they're big, and I was trying to. We, we were guessing the base sizes, weren't we? Because I thought, oh, God, if they're yeah. 32s or something, these are going to be massive. Um, but then the article came out, and and they're not, you know... as much. They appear to be 25s. They, I think they probably are. So I mean, we'll look at a few more pictures. At the moment, there's a sort of comparison size, but these are lovely. I don't know how many you'll get in the, in the set. I imagine quite a lot for the, those... Army sets you usually get a lot of money, a lot of money's worth in there, don't you? You get. It depends whether they do any other. If they do plague monks, which we've not seen anything of, but they have poison wing globe ears are going, but well, as plague, come to you yeah, later, the plague monks aren't, aren't on that. The plague monks weren't on that list. I don't think from memory. I might be wrong. Um, mm. So there's a bit of a mix. One thing I've noticed is they describe them as clan rats. Um, but wasn't there not everything was on the list and some other bits have disappeared as well? Have there's in, something in Stormcast that disappeared that uh, wasn't in that article. Wouldn't surprise me. So maybe me. the Plague Monks are going as well. Um, for, well, GW's marketing department making a spoon of it. Oh, there's a surprise. Well, they often forget stuff that's been released as well. I remember doing a bit of a review on the up-and-coming Wave 2 releases and saying that um, something from the Brett thing wasn't included, but it, it it was it was there it was, on it yeah. was there on pre order day, but just wasn't in the article. So I think sometimes that happens. It's more important to get it right when you're taking stuff away, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I, I love these miniatures. They look fantastic. They they still look like Skaven. They don't feel like they've kind of over AOS them, as some people would say. I don't think you. I don't think they've lost anything. I think they would fit perfectly well in AOS mm. and in the old world and the world that was. Um, 
It does look like I think they've rolled maybe rolled Storm Storm Vermin into Clan Rats. I might be wrong. Maybe maybe it's just that one sculpt look like Storm Vermin. I don't know. It, that could be the the champ. Yeah, you could be right, and he just looks like a champ. So maybe there will be more larger Storm Vermin. But yeah, I think these are brilliant. And there we go. And there's the the, the comparison between the old. Um, with the sort of the, the brown rim base and, and and the new, and they're the same size. And I think they're, they're not even that old, are they? No, I, I painted. I picked up one on eBay to paint for the tutorial I did, um, and I thought it was great. It was absolutely fine, and I would happily, you know, I, if well, I had the money now and they were still available, um, I would have purchased them i would purchase a lot of skaven right if i had the the funds right now and they were available in the web store still i would probably go and purchase a old world's army's worth of skaven bits because it's a project i really love to do um but my, my concern and we'll, we'll talk about this as things leave when we see this leaving but my concern is now um that while this may well come back to the old world um we're gonna have a long gap now without them in stock with other factions leaving the range of the beast variety. Again, we'll talk about this more later on. You know that they're part of the nine factions and going to be coming back at some point in the next couple of years, I imagine. Mm. Whereas I can't see a second edition for maybe four years or something like that. Um, so I don't think any of these are going to return in, until that may happen. Um which is a shame now because it's some of those kits would be needed and that means they're going to get very expensive on ebay um so uh, yeah it is what it is i've got other things i need to be spending my money on other short things but of the um of, of the dwarven variety but yeah if the, if if i had the money if i had a, a bit of money burning hard in my pocket right now and i could get hold of them i'd be searching as many stores as i could snapping up some scavenly stuff but but looking at this stuff gives me hope that I'll be able to do it using the new range. Um, and why, why not? The, the new range looks looks fantastic. Um, yeah, cool cool stuff. Anyway, we are back on screen, so you can stop picking your nose now, Dan, and then we'll uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, slowly close down those, uh, those other windows. But, uh, yeah, really, really cool. I think they're doing a good job there. I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of the range. Um, the if they do a new the, the new um, if they do a new abomination or something like that. You just know it's going to be absolutely cr crazy. Rat ogres are definitely being replaced, aren't they? So they are going to be yeah. insane models. I can imagine those. As might long end as up they being... don't go to techno arcana with them, I did like them when they were more clad molder and they were just big rats. Mm, I, that I think that's more likely to change than than the other stuff but, yeah um, when they went to skyra i was a bit mm. yeah 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 I'm, I'm with you on that i'm with you on that um let's move on to, to golden demon so this is i've not yes. got it i've, I've not got an image golden demon yeah so i've got i've not got an image for this because we um no. we only decided to talk about this yeah well it's we only decided to talk about this very and i don't want to go on a long tangent about this but we thought it'd be no. worth bringing up about the whole ai and art um, background mm. thing um, and we've both got I think we've got a similar opinion overall on it slightly different behind the scenes on the yeah. rest of it on, on, on our thoughts on AI in general and how on in art but also but in terms of I don't know you talk Dan I'll let you um, I'll, say, I'll let you dig well you I think we should hole. start with uh, again if I butcher this but uh, Alexandra Dos Santos who won the Slayer Sword I think mm. before we talk about anything else, because unfortunately, as much as Neil Hollis's Exodite is wonderful and everything, and it's judged by many as a, a topic of conversation, I think it is overshadowing what is an incredible piece mm -hmm. of work. Uh, the uh, Pale King, I always forget the actual name of the vampire, and they did the reflection piece. Yeah, And I had been seeing some of the work in progress of this, and the work he's done on it is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Um and actually the paint style looks very simple, most um, pastels and stuff, but you actually look at it and the, the amount of work that's actually in it's bonkers. Yeah. Um, so before we talk about any of the rest of it, extremely well done to him. Yeah. Uh, I doubt he watches, but if you do, really well done. Yeah, sorry, sorry we have not got <laughs> sort of sorry we've not got images to put. We should we, normally we would think about covering this, but um, it feels like we 
we should have done it in the last month. been done to death in exactly, recent weeks. Exactly. Um, um, so, obviously, uh, the big uh, topic, I suppose, again, it's a shame as it somewhat overshadowed the Slayer Sword winner, is the 40k single miniature gold, which was Neil Hollis's um, Exodite uh, mm -hmm. Riding a Lizard, which is a stunning piece of work. Uh, absolutely phenomenal piece of work. Um, but the issue people have is, one, it's got a background that's printed. Yeah. And two, uh, although I, I don't think it's actually being confirmed, I think this is the problem. There's been a lot of people who said Neil's confirmed it by poking fun at people on his Instagram story, which he took down. Right. And again, it this actually, when you hear this out loud, if anyone was over here was talking about this, it sounds incredibly teenage girl and tragic, really, when we talk about this. <laughs> um, it's not been confirmed, it's AI. Um, okay. He's, he's not said. And uh, no I one's been able to confirm. That's interesting. Well, I don't think Neil's come out and said it. Yeah. Um, I know that he was he's going to go on to cut a paint at some point and have a chat. Mm. So I'd imagine it will come up then. And I'd imagine he'll probably be quite forthright about it because yeah. that has always seemed Neil's way, be quite forthright about things. Um but there's no getting away from the fact he is a phenomenal painter. He's got, I think, two swords. Yeah. His some of his work is entirely the reason I got into army. My Night Lord's army literally happened because of the Love of Arthur and Dreadnought he painted. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, and his Perturabo was ridiculous. Um, so he, regardless of what anyone else can say about him, he is a phenomenal painter. The the work he did on the actual model that won the gold this year is entirely deserving of the trophy it took away. I think people are conflating the issue with AI, which I think is a worrying thing for a great many people in all sorts of industries, not just art. Although I think it's hitting artists hardest. Mm -hmm. Um, one, because a lot of their artwork has been flagrantly stolen as part of training exercises for AI programs, and I think that's wrong. Mm -hmm. um, two, as someone who can actually draw, there is a part of me that gets quite cross about people calling AI, AI prompt writing art. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's coding. It really is. It's coding mixed with a reasonable grasp of the English language. That's all it is. Um, or a language, whichever one your native one is. Um, and I think it does take food out of the mouths of proper artists. And there is a tech bro thing of go, ha ha, you know, get with the times. Um, yeah, not a fan. You know, everyone's laughing until it comes to them. Uh, they're all going to be laughing when no one has had to change a blooming uh, light bulb and the electricians are, you know, taking them outside and shooting them. Where does it stop? Uh, the point is, I think people need to be a bit more kind to each other and i don't necessarily think ai is the greatest thing in the world it has a great many uses it's it's coming into my working environment massively mm -hmm. hugely um affecting it and it, it's causing a lot of problems in my area of the world it's causing a lot of concern um uh, and people are also it's, it's got a lot of a lot of practical very positive uses as well so it's a it's it's a broader topic than one miniature in a war gaming painting. And regardless of anything else, the mo it is a model painting competition and yeah. it was the best painted one of its category. Mm -hmm. So he didn't win the sword. People are saying he should be stripped of his trophy. I think need to go and have a look at themselves. Most people who are sitting within the painting fraternity, i.e. anyone who actually would have a stab at taking the trophy off him legitimately, yeah. are all very supportive. Most of them know him for who he is and generally... He's always given the impression of just being very British, a little bit, a little bit cheeky, a little bit tongue in cheek, a little bit don't care, which is fine. And everyone seems to kind of know him for that. Um, and everyone's gone, well, it, it's brilliantly painted. Every single top painter who I respect the opinion of to comment on other painting has said it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Um, most of the people who are getting really arsy about it are people who aren't ever likely to be in a position to consider being robbed by him on their painting level. So I have to slightly discard their opinions, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's Personally. Fair enough. That's fair enough. If yeah. you can't paint at that level, you can have an opinion, but it doesn't carry any weight. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't disagree, if I'm honest with you. I pretty much agree with all of it. Uh, I definitely don't think there's any conversation like you about him having a taken away from him i think as a as a piece it looks like he deserved it fantastic i also don't think he's done anything wrong because if it is ai it's not against the rules at the moment yeah 
So yeah, I think it may prompt a conversation about what the rules look like in the and, future and, and about backgrounds. I think backgrounds. that's good. And I think that's that, that is good. And, it, and yeah. it's a conversation uh, that probably should be had and Games Workshop and other painting competitions have to have a conversation around that and, and, and make that very clear. Personally, uh, I wouldn't want to see an AI generated background. Um, I think it's less the AI. I think it's the fact it's printed for me. If you want to have that, it, you mm. want to, if you had generated the entire thing with AI and then repainted the entire thing, mm -hmm. you painted a copy of it onto it. Yeah. That, that's but what worked. point is there a problem with that? I well, That's his work. I'd probably, I think if you have a background, you should paint it. That's my only opinion on yeah, it. Yeah. I, I'd be happy with that. If that makes sense. If that was the yeah. rules, I'd accept it. Um, on a personal level, um, if someone, I so said AI would be completely out for me, and I'll come back to that in a moment. But if someone took a photographic image, their own picture, not you know, not mm. something they bought from stock images, they physically took the picture and then digitally edited it themselves. Um, that for me is an art form. Photography and and yeah. digital editing of your own photography is an art form, um, and then use that. I would accept that but i very 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 sympathetic to your idea of actually let's just say they've got to paint it because it's a painting competition not a general art competition so i'd be happy with free either a skill yeah yeah it's a different kind of skill isn't it but i i would probably be happy with just you paint it but if it was you know it's okay but it's got to be an image you've taken um you can't just stick a photo there you've got to you know it, you've got to make it fit the theme and if that means you digitally yeah. edit it then great as well i would also accept it's that um but it's a thin end of the wedge piece though because technically if you're using uh an auto editing like even on your phone mm. it uses a very primitive form of ai to edit your piece yeah, according yeah, to the way it perceives lighting it, levels it, and stuff so at what point in the wedge are we having a problem with um, this it's yeah i i would imagine that someone who took a picture and uh, wanted to fit a theme would probably not be hitting mm. an auto edit they would be it's still being done no, by the computer probably, but they'd be changing not. contrast and tints and, and, and th saturations to make it fit the overall color scheme of their piece um for example the background behind us at the moment is of a is of an image that i've completely changed the tones and colors of it in canva to match the oranges that are in the hobby hour logo you know so and that, that's an extremely simple basic level and there's no art involved yeah. in that it's just my eye going well it, the original image was a purpley color so i've changed the tints on it whereas if someone took a picture so for example he's in a it's in a forest or something somewhere um there's a lovely place near me in, in gloucestershire called puzzlewood they film some the dagobah parts in it i think it's a really okay. really very very cool beautiful place you could take some brilliant images there and you could definitely pass it off as jungle, rainforest jungle somewhere, certain elements of it. Or if you took do, those... Uh, what they called um, the the last issue of AOS, the what the new ones they did, the, the the they're not orcs, but they're kind of orcs. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. So, yeah, you could, anyway, yeah. you could take this image, you could take a, a picture there, for example, if we're using his example of it, mm. or his, his piece as an example, and digitally play with that so it fitted behind that miniature again if you know there, there are things but i'll accept it i actually prefer your idea of just that of rule you're an artist you've got to paint it that simple in terms of ai and art i probably don't want to go down the rabbit hole but i i've got no problem with ai and um, certain certain fields it's going to be brilliant especially when you know, doctors are using it in medicine at the moment and the way they the things they could, could potentially do hmm. um, incredible i do have issues with it with art um because ai created art is just taking other people's art <laughs> and mm. stealing it and to create something else and mashing enough of other people's art together to create something but it is other people's art so it is not original it's very much a frankenstein isn't it exactly it's... exactly and it's incredible what you can do um um but it is other people's art and it and it concerns yes, me a lot it's... it concerns well so, it, as well it should well very recently the I don't know the guy's name, but very high up in um, Hasbro was talking about Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons oh, and yeah, saying, just, just saying, yes, we'll look, at, we'll, we'll look to use AI because we're going to, we've got all of this content, all this 30, 40 years of Dungeons and Dragons content out there, art and writing, game writing. We can just mine it and we can generate stuff rather than get people to write new stuff. So not only, yes, you technically own 
excuse me, the IP because you own it all, but rather than create it, you know, paying new creatives to paint art, draw art, digitally create art even, and write new stories, you can make something that's new. And you, you can probably make something passable. Um, and then over time, though. Uh, over time, though, surely that's going to get narrower as well because you're going to be creating mm. from the, the original natural stuff and more AI stuff. So that concern, I don't like the sound of that at all. And yeah. it worries me the so future may be for... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I can see a world where it'll be trendy to buy from smaller companies who only make stuff in-house by people. Created, because you might, you, you, 20 years down the line, there's going to be yeah. rubber stamp created by real people rather than by computers. And this could happen with 40K, with AOS, with anything Games Workshop do, because at some point, money talks. And a corporate business are going to go, hang well, we don't have to pay salaries. We can just, we can generate On, on the other hand, though, as a community, nerds can be incredibly um, well attuned to whether something feels very hollow and soulless mm -hmm. and can be very visceral about it. Yeah. I almost hope someone does try it and is eviscerated so horribly for it and yeah. basically run through the mire. Not at a person that I'm not saying, you know, the executive family should be taken out and shot, but literally just everyone's turned around and gone, this is, this is hollow, this is soulless yeah. crud. It doesn't belong in any sphere we we live in. Go 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 sell it to people who, you know, have no interest. In it. And it, it it bombs so terribly. Yeah, it it informs everyone else in the industry. This is a bad idea. Let's not do it. It's it's already happening on a micro level, isn't it? This is the problem. These things. Well, are coming. the of the coast backlash when he's turned around and but, gone. Oh, maybe not then. Yeah, well, but they've already been using it, haven't they? They've admitted that they've yeah. already been using AI created art from their own art, but they're using AI created art. Yeah, and um, it's, it's and, generated and again, a backlash though, hasn't it, it? Well, yeah, because it's it, not only do people. The whole point of art is that people's soul goes into it to a yeah. certain extent. So there's a real connection with art. Um, and and what we 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 um what we enjoy you know I, I mean, Jordan's going to come up quite a few times in this because I you know went to see him when well, we we went to Warhammer World later later earlier this month um and he his whole channel is based around talking to these creatives that have produced a lot of the stuff we love mm. over the last forty years um so it feels. It's going to you get know, a little bit less interesting if he's just sat there looking at a box, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I, 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 the nostalgia of Warhammer for me is is remembering the games and things that I love, but and also looking back at the creators from from that time and the creatives and and I, you know, there's creatives now that work at Games Workshop that I love their work and I like what they do with their painters, um, artists, writers, with that fiction or rules. Um, and those people are really important, and we've got to be careful that those kind of jobs continue to exist. Anyway, this can get us a really deep. It's a lovely conversation. I'd love to sit in a pub and have a conversation around forty years time when we're um, when the art, when the computers are doing all the art, and, and, and God knows what we're doing. Um, but, I think it's optimistic. I'm still going to be here in forty years, to be honest with you. Well, if the world's like that, man, we probably wouldn't want to be. But anyway, let's move on from that because that is a huge topic. But um, interesting one it'll be interesting to see what the repercussions are in the wider painting competition world and whether there's small print added soon saying can't use ai generate generate art which i imagine is probably what's going to be the outcome um uh, it, policing that's going to be a, a bugger though um mm. that'll be that'll be fun same as people saying oh you know you you, you, you got to paint everything but you know oh what about people who use transfers people who use transfers aren't winning golden demon <laughs> No, <laughs> they're no, really they're, not. No, they're not. But... Um, it's it's a it's a contentious one, and I, I think moving on though to another contentious thing. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, also the Golden Demon related. The Golden Demon trophies. Yeah, um, James Taro. In, interestingly enough, for those of you who don't know who James Taro is, uh, he produces a lot of very high quality resin plinths, so has a great deal of knowledge on the uh, the treatment of said plinths. Uh, and how to use the material. Um, and he won a couple of trophies uh, at Epticon. I think he won three, two bronzes and a silver. Um, maybe wrong. Uh, and obviously, by the time he even got back into the UK, uh, a lot of them were missing the black paint from the, the plinth, the base of the uh, the trophy. Yeah, I noticed also Ninjon won a uh, bronze for yeah. Age of Sigma uh, for his uh, dude on a horse and collected chaps. And his, I noticed in his video, was missing 
paint from the front edge. Really? Oh, I dear. noticed that even before Tara. I thought you dropped it or something. Um, you never know. People people do. I mean, you'd be gutted, wouldn't you? But um, apparently it just rubbed off the front. It was the bare resin you could see, not a chip. Oh. Um, and then James obviously um, put... Uh, he's he's on Instagram. Uh, and you can see what he had to do. He's obviously very good at it and explain what they were doing wrong, essentially. Yeah. But it, it goes to show, though, that, uh, you know... You'd expect better for what's supposed to be a premium painting competition for the trophies and stuff. Yeah. And if would. the quality of the trophy you're receiving is lesser than potentially the trophy you're getting from, you know, your local club's, you know, quarterly 40K tournament, it's a little bit uh, not so good. So hopefully someone at GW's paid attention to that and whichever poor soul they have to, from the events team who they give that responsibility to, they one give them the time and the opportunity to do it properly if they already know how to if not train them to do it properly because i'd hate to be the poor bugger who's someone in gw did those yeah probably didn't know any better or wasn't given the time to do it properly yeah and is now feeling pretty rough about themselves maybe maybe uh, I also I and mean, we've all had problematic resin from forge World where it's especially when something's new mm. It's new molds. Yeah. Extra. I don't know if there's extra release. That you know, we have release agent for molds and things. Each company does it slightly differently, has their own methods, but the essentials are the same. And it often feels like the newer products are the ones that you often find that you've stubborn grease. Mm. You wash it time and time again, and you still find you've primed. We've all been there at some point, primed and then paint chipped off. I wonder whether they've got a whole brand new set of molds for them. And this was just Possibly. a brand new batch, first time out. Brand new for this, you know, we're going to, we're going to make these look good. <laughs> Ironically, we're going to make these look good because we're going to Adepticon. Um, well, we've not got a UK one this year. Let's print off, print off. Let's, let's pour resin, <laughs> pour, it's cast. That's the words I'm looking for. Cast a new set. Maybe that's what it was as well. So it's, um, but yeah, they, they definitely needed cleaning. Well, I, I do um, wonder if the new properly. demon was, uh, the new or latest demon design was actually, 3d sculpted mm -hmm. there is part of me that looking at it it thinks well, maybe I, I haven't looked that closely to be honest with you um but interesting 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 yeah they're, they're, but it was interesting and, and james does break down uh what he thought was wrong with it and the way he fixed it in yeah. his um in his instagram post which we'll try and remember to put the links in the show notes it'll be interesting if you're interested in that kind of thing mm. um so moving on, um, something that you raised to me because I'm no longer a member of the Facebook group. Yeah, um, just something that w it was, uh, happened last time. So there's a really big Facebook group called Evia Metal. Um, it's a painting Facebook group. Lots of people watching this, I'm sure, will be a member because there used to be about 120,000 people and such. Pretty big in terms of Facebook groups go. Um, and it's kind of been stolen, which is a bizarre thing. I didn't know this could happen. Um, but there was four new admins that all joined the group kind of in, in February. And I don't know how they do it, but they basically get the other admins removed um, and they steal the group. Um, and these four people have done it to quite a few others. So it's something, I don't know, Facebook just don't do anything about it, do they? But um, this had happened no. to quite a few other really big groups, non-wargaming ones, but other big groups. And I'm guessing that they're, you know, their farm information. I'm guessing there will be, at some point, they will be spammed um adverts and they use it to maybe there'll be bots and things involved who knows which who's running these kind of things whether they're just individuals i imagine they're making money out of it somehow or other um but yeah it got basically got stolen and all the the guys that created this group I and mean, it's a, a pretty big facebook group they have painting competitions i've got a t-shirt for Evia metal that i bought a few years back um, Dave Taylor is one of the guys that runs it, and he's obviously got um, background, I think, with GW and all kinds of things. So he's mm. um, written a book and stuff as well. So, they, you know, these are people that have got a good sort of hobby pedigree. This is not just some Facebook group. Yeah. This is a really big thing with that many people that it's, it, you know, that many admins and that many people. It's it's a thing in itself. Yeah, I just, just wondered if people had spotted it, really, and if you are in that group go and leave it <laughs> because um, people have kind of, he's gone down to about 93,000, but he's not really dropping anymore. Mm. I think there's a lot of people just gone, well, you know, at the moment it's still functioning as a group, um, but it's a bit soulless because the admins aren't, don't care about the content. They just remove anyone who complains and, and calls them out. They just remove them from the group. But there's a, there's a new one set up called Eviest Metal. 
Um, I think you know there's nowhere near the same amount of people in them, but that's they've kind of reset it up. Um, um, and yeah, if you're in Evia Metal and didn't know that, go and check out Eviest Metal and leave Evia Metal. We don't have to, but my I I have. You know, this is these aren't people got anything to do with the wargaming world that, that own that now. The, the admins, yeah, they're, there. Do, they're evidently not with good intent. No, but whatever's. <laughs> Nothing much is happening at the moment, I don't think, but I'm not in that group. It's an open group anyway, so you can't public group. You can just pop in and have a look still. Um, and you can post anyway. But, uh, yeah, that's that those people have, have maliciously taken over like a Beyonce group and something or other as well. There's like a group of about, a list of about 20 or so big Facebook groups, all with like 100,000 plus people in. And these same group of four admins have, have stolen them for whatever reason. So I would suggest, yeah, leave it who knows what they're going to do with your information with you being in there I don't know how it works someone might know more but also just at the principle of it really go and support the heaviest metal who are the guys from the group that you did join um, and um, yeah, hopefully that one will grow and the other one will uh, slowly disappear off but a bit, bit sad really the way the world is but um, anyway on that note Dan what have you been up to with your hobby? Well, not the hugest amount, uh, in honesty. I mean, as I always say this. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I've been working on Thorson, Thorson Stoutmead. Um, you have been, yeah. So I've done a bit now on him, which is good. Um, but I need to get him finished before I can really touch anything else, because that's only fair. Because I've been meaning to paint this model for a, probably nearly two years. <laughs> <laughs> you, I <laughs> so did. The person who's intended on receiving this is... Um, yeah, he's been waiting a long while for it. I remember you telling me you were going to do it. And I think I remember you showing me the Black Prime miniature. And that, yeah, that probably was yeah, a while ago. <laughs> he's looking awesome. Not though. good. I love I love what yeah, you're doing um, with him so far. I'm pretty happy with him. I was so rusty. Um, muscle memory is so quick to go. So fast to go. I don't even not, I've not... I did a bit of painting. I think, obviously, I hadn't done any what I'd consider serious painting since the old world release purely because I couldn't be asked because they killed off my dream of the vampire counts. So the army that I was putting a lot of love and energy into, I just went, mm. and the Skaven are nice, but they weren't to the same level. And I'm trying to do this to the same level of the vampire counts. And it's, yeah, it's proven yeah. a bit more difficult to get. It's not impossible. I think I'm achieving the same level of, paint job yeah it's just taking more out of me to do it i'm having to concentrate a lot more what would normally just be a bracket in line no problem i'm, I'm with you yeah place it uh, we get there but yeah and there's a, the occasional more mistake i mean half of it is everyone makes mistakes and half the skill in many, much of this stuff is hiding the mistake once you've made it yes rectifying it yes yes um definitely. i'm just finding i'm making a few more mistakes than i would normally um, but it'll it'll come good. I reckon I'll have him done in the next week or two. So I love what you're doing. Plan. With him, he looks very, very, very cool. Thank you very much. So apart from that, um, I have been rewatching these. Nice know, Lord of the Rings uh, 4Ks. I literally finished watching Return of the King yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, uh, on another front, I actually do have. So models. Nice. I know that box. <laughs> yes. So for those of you who can't quite tell from my potato cam, this is the Slave Star Atlas Vanguard times two, which makes up a portion, uh, the bulk of my upcoming 2000 points Warriors Chaos Army. Uh, a lot of the large chunk of it is going to be the upcoming Dark Oath box, which yeah. hopefully won't be too long. Hopefully it won't be too quick either, because one, I don't want to spend the money this month, and uh, <laughs> two, I want to try and get as much of that done as possible before it drops. So, uh, may if possible, please, GW. Um, <laughs> I bought some bases and, uh, you know, uh, big bags of bases. I have to admit, 100 bases in one go is a bit of a pain, because I'm not going to use 130 mils. I'm paying 30 quid for it. Yeah, Stings. well, that, that's where you went wrong. Hobby, I want the hobby square heaven. edges. <laughs> hobby I want heaven. the square edges. Um, and well, one's come up. That's there. Tw there's twenty in there, I think, for yeah, thirty by sixties. 
Um, and I'll use 15 of them because I'll have five more on a horse and 10 knights. Yeah. So I'll use the majority of those. I need to buy some of the um, chariot ones. Yeah. Two packs of those because I need to make my unit spacer, um, but a four by eight, uh, sorry, a four by two yeah. of 30 mil is 120 by 60 and they do a 60 by 100. So I've got to cut and shut two together. Nice. Nice. <sighs> I do these things to myself um, and I am making my own movement trays. So I've ordered all of it, some pieces for that. Uh, okay. I'll share more of that when that arrives. Nice. Um, they ended up costing me a fair bit of money, but they will be exactly what I want once I've done them. So Amazing. I'll take that. Amazing. So the, the original play doh, yeah. Having... Corrugated yeah, cardboard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More like to eat it. Um, no, that cost is no. probably, it's probably Lego, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's um I know, I it's, know. It's plastic card and, and bits and pieces, but I'm gonna make it from scratch. Nice. So they will probably be maybe by the time we next uh, record mm. I should have at least the first one done. Oh looking forward to seeing or, those though. Or made. Um so that will be done. So that's sorted and I can't think of what else I've been up to. Um I'm gonna consult my notes. I'm you know, ruining the old <laughs> uh right. right um obviously uh it's part of my uh spacer i've got some models that mm -hmm. i'll come to there'll be more of a be revealed later obviously you're aware of some of them but one of the models if anyone does follow me on my social media uh accounts um i've been trying to get hold of is the best of gore oh, i haven't uh, got that image to show off band. here but yep um yeah um, I, he, I, he's my he's my He's my standard in my Marauders unit, my current one. I um, yeah. tri trimmed the spiky ball off and extended the pole and then stuck the spiky ball back on again. It looks, it looks quite cool, but um, he's a lovely well, model. Naturally, uh, involved in this whole um, retirement, that particular war cry war I, know, band I couldn't believe it. Caught couldn't up believe it. it. It's a spy tyrant, wasn't he? He was in that set, wasn't he? Or was, yeah, or, uh, got, was he in the Dark I can't Oath? Remember the spy no, tyrant was in the Dark Oath. Yeah, so it's the Spy Tyrant. So I bought both. I had both sets, and I kind of built them at the same time. Mm. I forget which was in which. So yeah, if he's in the Spy Tyrants, but, then um, yeah, they're on the way out. I'm glad I picked so them up when I did. I wanted him, um, and luckily my mate Tim, uh, Eva Pilotone on um, Instagram, came to a rescue. Uh, he's nice. a, he's a very lovely chap. He also sent me some stickers, which is pretty cool. He's had these uh, stickers maybe. I think the design was done by his mate, who's a tattoo artist, and they're, they're quite cool. It's I'm always up for another sticker for my um, uh, wet palette. Yeah. So happy days. Uh, through the magic of science, I think Stu will probably be showing a picture of yeah, the best there, of all, there is, sticker. There is, yes. Uh, which is cool. Um, and it's a shiny. And uh, if anything, we've learned from sticker books as a child, shiny <laughs> stickers are always the best stickers. Um, so that's 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 another cool thing that... Um, been doing obviously on topic of old world uh i went up to one world a couple of weeks back on the tuesday took off day uh dragon mate nick with me uh to play against uh mr entwhistle dan mm -hmm. whistle who is one of the writers for old world so he knows the game which is good because he does. we needed he does. the help um and uh <laughs> our mate soph who works for gw as well or did has now left um hopefully will join us on this in a future date to chat about stuff um yeah, not G-Dub. Not G-Dub. No, definitely not G-Dub. Um, but... Um, Just to manage people's expectations there. It's not, yeah, it's not a... Yeah. Not a, a when we're not doing an expose on G-Dub or anything like that, it's... Uh, she's just an interesting person i think other people might be interested to hear from mm -hmm. um but we had a game uh soph and nick played with soph's dwarves and dan or two dans played with his orcs and goblins and gave them an absolute shoe in um which was good <laughs> crumping them shorties up disgraceful uh, and then we went out for pizza and uh one of the chaps from the game studio gav who does a lot of the sculpting for uh specialist game studio he did a lot of the he did tree beard i know that much mm -hmm. and so you know fighting my fangirl in and he's also very very tall and very very slim uh so there was definitely an element of himself in this cult <laughs> uh if i were to ever meet anyone who was capable of saying uh that doesn't make sense to me but you are very small it would be him <laughs> thoroughly lovely gentleman really lovely day um uh so yeah that was that was good fun um i actually picked up some of the bits but you know uh then 
Um, and it was good to just play Old World, to be honest. That was the first time I actually had to play a game. Um, I kind of knew it would be good, but it's you don't know till you play, and it plays really well, really, really intuitively. I really enjoy the way that the um, morale system works in it. Mm-hmm. far more than previous editions the fact right. that you, it's uh, yeah there's a bit more calculation in it but it actually is more nuanced i also really like the way they've actually um and it hadn't really occurred to me up until the point other people might think i'm thick on this but disassociating strength from yeah. the ap system so yes. it gives them an awful lot more um design, design space haven't you yeah yeah which is really good um because obviously if Trolls are kicking around with a double ended weapon or whatever, and then you know, strength four base goes up to six. So, what are you, what are you thinking? Oh my god, you know, I had minus three and then plus minus yeah. one at the end. Oh my god, it's not, you're just easier to wound, and you've only got the so again, that makes things like the Ogre Blade, which has got like the D3 wounds, and it's a great weapon for the strength, and you get the armor piercing, it makes yeah. it infinitely more valuable. It's the AP than... that makes it different, yeah, it's good. Well, that and the D3 is that's pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, um, it was really good to play it. Really enjoyed it. Looking forward to playing some more, really looking forward to playing it in my Chaos Warriors. So mm, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, we'll, I'm looking forward to you getting that army, army done. Cause we need to book a, a day where we, we go and play some. Yeah. I'm hoping for the world. summer. Mm. Um, yeah, I think being realistic is probably going to take me another week or two to finish off Thorson, um, mm-hmm. with just the way life can be, um, and then I want to get started on this. It'll take a little while to put together, and then I need to wait for the the marauder bits. Um, I mean, ultimately, my, my army's not that big because it's Warriors of Chaos. Yes. I think only uh, five or six units on the table, including characters and stuff. But, you know, it's it'll take a little while to paint up even so because I want to do a nice job on them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course you will. Of course you will. But yeah, even if it's um, sort of tail end of the summer or something, I think we'll... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I, I expect to be done by... Uh, actually, he says this. I don't know why I do this to myself, but I'm planning on it anyway. <laughs> what about you then? Oh, well, well, I may have finished one of my many armies by then. Um, <laughs> it'd be interesting to see which one it will be. I don't know. Um, so what I've been up to. So so had some... It's been up and down, I suppose, since we we last recorded. I finished the yeah, Black you, you Hawk video. Loss. My yes, my stuff the loss. My, the, I've had some good things as well, but so my I put the Black Hawk video out, um, which was sort of talking about the way the launch went. I put that on launch day, and it, mm. you know it's not not done. Up be honest but he's not done as well as some of the other videos and i that's when i started to realize that oh yeah this is the, the pattern now of 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 old world videos is the excitement is up to pre-order day and then everyone's like right next next hmm. um but the black Hawk video went out and then my mac died um and it's it was quite hard to get that video out as well i didn't know if i was going to happen at one point so um well, we were recording this on my new mac <laughs> thank god um and um, but yeah it was it was stressful so um, yeah my mac just decided it couldn't cope with processing or doing much anymore it just shut itself down and i think it took me 18 attempts to export that video i'd edited it but it, to actually export it into a file and then you got to upload afterwards it's the exporting part and was just making my RAM, making my memory, and, and then the CPU was going, nah, at the end as well. So, yeah, f- frustrating, expensive, but um, we're, we're nearly there at a better setup now. I've got a, a really nice, fast machine, um, a very new MacBook Air now, which is um, very different to what I had before as an iMac, but um, so I need a monitor for things like this. Um, luckily, I'm sitting close enough, but I need a monitor for editing, but... Um, it being um, very portable has meant that I've already edited away from the office, which is, I mean, we talked about me hobbying away from the office and using my little portable setup, which I've used loads. Um, it helps with editing as well. I can finish recording, but it just gets some wife points sometimes and, and she'll be watching Apprentice or something like that. And I can sit there with my headphones in and edit and she's happy because just because I'm there rather than being two floors away, ignoring her all the time, which I was spending a lot of time in here in the evenings working on video stuff because it's not my day job as much as I want it to be. It's not. Um, mm. So, um, yeah, so the, it's, it's, a, it's, it's meant that I had to buy something that I wasn't planning on getting till maybe next year. Um, 
got it already but it's being able to edit away from from the desk is great um really really good so and it's so quick so there we are so happy accident in the end but it did it put me i'm about three weeks behind on where i want to be on videos or two weeks probably um so things are yeah things are fr frustrating from a channel's point of view but other than that fine mm. um and then we'll do and then i went on to i'm trying to do this in quadratical order so i don't forget um so that, that also messed up my my project for warriors of chaos so i was speed painting that that army project um i've got base coats down on everything so it's essentially gameable but i don't like to Mm. game with them like that um especially do i do for a living i didn't want to take them up to warhammer world um um which is what no it's, it's really it's personal uh, pride I, isn't it it's yeah it's, I, I paint paint for a living and paint my channel is is 75 percent painting i wanted them to be finished they weren't gonna you know they were going to be army painted standard but um you could like you've said they are something that's relatively quick to paint um, and I really like my method and I've been filming it. So it will be a video at some point as well. Um, but um, I had three days where I pretty much had like a time to paint that. And then I spent two days just trying to get that one video done. Um, and I think it was worth it because I got the video out for, for launch day in the end. But it was, I don't know, it was just a frustrating week. And then once I realised that army wasn't going to be painted as well. Now, luckily, talking to Jordan, who I was meeting in Nottingham on Good Friday to play that game. I was one of the people I was meeting to play that game. Um, he he realised he didn't have enough of an army as well. He was going to be using some AOS demons um, on movement traits, and he realised he didn't have anywhere near enough to make anything playable for for old world. So that made things a little bit easier. So I had to let um, 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 I had to let Val from um, Square Base know that he was also coming to play. Um, that we wouldn't be playing Old World anymore, um, but he still came in met us. But anyway, so we, we played Dark Future. Yeah. Um, and so da so Jordan and I we do our books club, and the next book club is the first Dark Future novel, Route Six Six Six. So we um, we we thought oh, we, he had Dark Future, so we just sort of thought, well, why don't I? Why don't I? Uh, why don't we play that? And he was like, okay, I'll bring it up. And the first picture you can see there, well, Dan can't see, is the steam tank, steam tank, the um, the, the land ship the, um, that I painted for him. I was delivering that as well. That was another reason I was going up there. So that's it on the dark future um, road. <laughs> um, um, but um, yeah, we, we played one game of dark future with two cars. Um, and it took us from i don't know i met him there at 10 o'clock on friday on the friday morning and we finished the game about five o'clock um we played one game just talking loads um it, there was quite a lot of rules searching that the uh the layout of that book is probably not the most modern so to speak um and then we had probably a two-hour lunch with val as well so val came <laughs> and we went and sat and put the words to rights put the world to rights the wargaming world to rights in in bugman's she so had a good two-hour lunch and then jordan and i spent about two hours i think in the museum as well the time we came out it was sort of seven o'clock and they were just about to close the museum up um but um it was it was cool and the the um I was I, I feared that the Volganoff um, display was going to go and they're going to put the new iOS one there, but um, no, it's still there. And I've realised I've not included a picture of the the, um, the new Brett um, Old World one that was there on open day, but they've actually included flying uh, bone dragons now. But anyway, we um, yeah we we spent ages there and we went out to um, went for a pizza ourselves on the Friday evening. Um, and we stayed over that night, and and then the next day we went to the TSN Arena, which is so the annoying honor. because I was in Nottingham the same day. <laughs> you, you were, weren't you? <laughs> Weirdly, so we went to the TSN Arena, which is um, the Honest War Gamers um, venue. So, if anyone watches the so Siri's trying to talk to me. So the on my phone. So the Honest War Gamer um, channel, who also is the co-host of Square Based with Val. Um, we went to his venue in the centre of Nottingham and they had his GT, an old world GT that day. Um, I think it was the second one he's done or maybe it was the, the first, I can't remember. But uh, it's really nice to see Rob's set up there. Um, bumped into and Louis Sugden as well. She popped in. He saw her, so anyone who watches Rogue Hobbies and watches Honest War Game and watches his streams and things, saw their little setup. 
Um, and he always films before a green screen. I didn't take pictures of their office setup. I thought that might be encroaching a bit too much. But as a Val playing with these orcs and goblins playing the game, um, but saw her rogue hobbies thing, and they're right next to each other. So you see her videos, and you see the little corner she's in, um, and they obviously have to take turn to film because they'd obviously be talking over each other. But it was really good fun. Really, just really nice weekend. I hung around most of the Saturday as well, and then and drove back. Um, Jordan handed off a copy of Deathwing, which is uh, another book for later in the series that I hadn't picked up yet, and gave me a copy of the um, uh, uh, Ian Livingston Judge Dread board game as well, because he had two copies. So that was pretty cool, to be honest. This is just a really good, really good weekend, um, 36 hours or whatever it is spent there, hanging out. I love being in Warhammer World, just hanging out in there for, you know, best part of 10 hours. Uh, and play, only playing one game, but it's just nice chatting to people and um, chatting to Jordan about all things ball gaming and YouTube-ish, lots of chatting about YouTube ideas and things, and then you know spending a lot of time at the TSN Arena talking to Rob and, and talking about YouTube and what he's doing there as a venue and the, the way he's running his old world events, and obviously he does lots of AOS stuff as well. So if you haven't, I'm sure I can imagine people of watching this and not heard of it but check out he's got lots of different channels he puts on different things but on his war gamer covers mostly age of sigma square based with val is old world focused and he's got a separate streams one he does twitch and things and everyone would have heard of um rogue hobbies um x gw warhammer tv presenter um louis sugden and her channel which has gone from you know in Okay, space of a year to 120,000 subscribers, so a really big channel. But yeah, it's quite nice looking at their setups and looking at the, and the menu a good pub and stuff. The corner. Bunkers Hill. Bunkers Hill. The corner. Uh, we didn't, so we, Dan, Dan and I didn't, Dan and I, um, Jordan and I didn't go to any pubs. We just drunk in the pizza place we went to. It's literally, uh, if you look at it, it's to the left, it's next to the arena. Uh, nice. Yeah, it's there's lots pub. of places I'd like to explore, actually. The pizza place we went to is good. I'm trying to remember what it was called. Is this uh oh? Is this up near Lace Market? I, uh, yeah, pizza. Oh, yeah, I think I know which one you're on about. Yeah, just by saying it was a pizza place, that's good going. <laughs> was it opposite or near Mowgli? Yeah, not too far around from around there. Yeah, yeah. I know which one you're on about. Yeah, it was yeah. nice, nice, and laid, nice and laid back place. Really good, cheap as well. Isn't that thirteen quid for a pizza? Really good. But anyway. People aren't here Can't to listen that. to pizzas. <laughs> but anyway, just a really nice weekend. Um, didn't get to play Old World. That's the the main bummer. Um, so the, the computer dying, I'm happy with because I've got my replacement. Yes, it's cost me a certain amount of money to get a new one. But um, <laughs> an Apple, Apple stuff isn't cheap, especially when you buy the new one that was only out in March. But it's, yeah, it's what I need moving forward anyway. But the, I suppose the biggest hobby downer was not having that, uh, well, you know, Warriors of Chaos Army done. Um, mm. um, and I haven't done an awful lot on it since. Um, now I set myself on the monthly hobby pledge just to finish that army this month, um, but I haven't done anything else on it because you do lose that little bit of momentum. I'm still going to do it, and I'm really pumped to do it, but um, I'm going to change my pledge to some dwarves because I want to do some dwarf content as we build up to whenever the dwarf release is, based on what I was talking about earlier, about the when the excitement is there, you tap into it, and if I wait till launch, um, I might well find the same thing that happened with the Orcs and Goblins. So I have mm. acquired some when I was in War. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite dangerous parking at Warhammer World because I leave my car overnight when I go because I might have a beer and when I'm playing the game. And then I would get an Uber into town afterwards, um, stay in a hotel in the centre of town, and then pick the car up the next day. Perfect. But of course. You know, it's very rude not to do, you know, I just I wanted to use the toilet and, you know, pop into Warhammer World on the Saturday before I drove back and accidentally picked up some some dispossessed hammerers stroke long beards. Um, so, um, but I've, I've, I've got a two, you know, with bits already had and, and a few little bits from here and there, I've got a 2000 point first dwarf list ready to go, apart from the new king new plastics that new double box set is going to be my i'm going to use the king as it is mm. and the 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 other it's a nice capstone though isn't it yeah 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 and the other guy i'm going to turn into a bsb i think um because i wouldn't need Do you reckon they'll be the ones you paint for the channel and they just go into your army at the end probably to be honest with you i don't need that battalion box anymore unless games which i want to send me it but i don't need it i've got 
I've already, you know, I already had those sixth edition plastics, which I've done a little short for, but that will be a tutorial. They're going to be some rangers and some quarrelers. Um, and then I've got long beards, which are the new ones for now. Um, and the same with hammers and using the new ones. And I've, I've, I've got to let me find an image here, actually. So I've, I'm not a super fan of the newer ones. Well, I didn't think I was. Uh, they're okay. I, I they're think a my, lot nicer in person than you think they are. Yeah, like I never owned them. I, I, I like, never. Oh, actually, they're all right. <sighs> See, I'm a fan of the old ones, and I said on the uh, on many things on the channel. I'm not a huge fan of those newer plastics, but I want to play dwarves. They were always mm -hmm. my most played army. Um, and when this comes out, I want to. I don't want to be waiting sort of a year down the line. Um, these will be. I reckon this army will be ready before anything else, because I've got about less than sixty miniatures in it, and 40 of them are mostly metal <laughs> there's very little of, of any organic stuff on them so they'll, they'll paint quick um but i um bring this little image up if anyone can see it that's a a sixth edition um plastic next to um the new new guy and i left the shoulder pads off i realized that just by leaving the shoulder pad, pad off that, that sort of hammer stroke long beard kit makes a huge difference um because they've still got full I play and they've got to watching this later and work, yeah, work yeah this i'll change you i'll just send you the picture <laughs> later it's easier um i mean this is what they look like next to a metal hammer they were a little bit larger um so that picture is is not my metal hammer it's actually one of my patrons and the guy ben i chat to all the time so hi ben if you're watching this um i'm sending some stuff on to him from ebay um, to Australia because it's easier, it's cheaper for me to send it on to him. That's not a service I offer to all patrons, by the way. Um, but um, you can see that the plastic one's a little bit bigger. But if you keep those shoulder pads off, um, they look a little bit more like older school Warhammer dwarves. Um, so that's what I went for. So the size, while they look a little bit bigger, it doesn't really make a lot of difference when you compare the sixth edition ones were bigger than the the dwarf, the dwarf hammers as well. Um, but um, yeah, I'm 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 pretty happy with that to be honest with you. So I've, I've yeah I've got my list sorted. I just just need a few characters and and I'm done. I've got a metal organ gun on the way and um, I've got two gyrocopters on the way um, and um, and the rest of it I've already got. So yeah, so I'll be doing some. I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm going to change my pledge over partly because I'm engaged with painting dwarfs because I love them and also they're going to be some of the upcoming painting tutorials on the channel over the next sort of four to six weeks or so not knowing when the doors are out but i'm guessing um that you know two months max probably i'd hope based on when they announce mm, them it's got to um, be soon surely i can't imagine it being it's usually two months from when they show you the picture or no more than three months isn't it i think is the absolute limit it was mm. two months almost exactly two months last time between Orcs being shown and them coming and their actual release day as well, not just the pre order day, actual release day. So, my yeah, guess it was is a world open day, wasn't it? When they that's, actually that's right, and them. it was about the 20th or 21st when released. So, my guess is probably not April, pre order some point in, in May. That's my guess. Whether that's an early May pre order and they're out two weeks later, or whether it's right at the end of May, but I reckon some point in May that's what I'm, I'm working to. So, I'll try and get some. Some, some dwarf tutorials and things out of the way but I'll be working working on those and as soon as that's done I'm going to go back and finish those Warriors of Chaos off just because I'm really excited to do them still I might still paint little bits of mm. them um, but um, it seems to make sense that dwarves are my thing I'd be excited to paint them and I probably should be painting them anyway for the channel so why not why not do those now so that's my thought process on that I painted the Humber which I've already talked about Octum Panzer earlier on at the moment I'm in the middle of painting and recording um the other tanks for, for for another video um and um and and then i haven't really done an awful lot else so two two more things to talk about one i, I haven't got pictures of this so i'll talk about it quickly i painted a couple of years ago i painted a, a mordor army for, for middle earth mm. as a commission um and a regular client in the us um painted it for him quite liked it um, and I've been sitting on my own unpainted for ages um, and I'm doing some work for him later in the year and he contacted me and said I've been trying to sell this you know I've never played never played it basically um, I really wanted to but I just haven't got the time so I'm going to sell it on uh, I've asked a couple of people locally no one wants it do you want it and I was like I quite like it 
Um, I wouldn't buy a painted army, but I painted it, so it's okay. Um, I thought, okay. And he said, just, you know, we basically were taking it off the bill. Um, and the deal is quite good in terms of the, the value for it. Um, less than I would charge to paint it, so to speak. So the amount of money he was happy for it to go for was good. So technically I've not paid anything for it. It'll just be, he's got some credit for me for a job, a big job I'm doing later in the year. So I now have a quite a large Mordor army fully painted. When I mean large, I mean like 30 Moran and 20, mm. 20 plus Mordor orcs and um, troll and most of the characters. I think there's only one of the newer sets that's missing. Um, so I sold off. Muska and Razgush, by any chance? Yes, those two, I think. So those are the ones I haven't got. Um, it's an older goth mod painted. Um, so what I did was I got all of the stuff that I've had sitting in boxes, you on sprue, and sold all of that. Um, because I've got a painted army now and it's arrived. I wish I'd, I have got, I've got pictures of it, but I haven't put them up in this ready to go. So, but um, yeah, so I've got a fully painted Mordor. So I've got a new old army that was never mine, but is so my cabinet now has a, a, a large army and a decent sized Mordor army in even some, there's some wild riders and stuff in it as well as a uh, Nazgul. Um, and I already had some other bits from that. So it's quite nice to add something that's been on my to-do list for ages. I might go back and rebase um, a bit more to my style sort of thing, but um, and do a odd little touch up here and there. I will paint the new goth mug for, mounted for it at some point and replace the one that's already there. But I've got one more Nazgul as well like I've without a rider because I had a spare one and I painted up two different riders and magnetised it for him, but I've got the spare mm. Nazgul now, so I will um, paint that up at another point. So there's two. I, might, I think I've got a second troll knocking around somewhere. But yeah, I just sold off two starter sets worth of Mordor and Moran and Orcs and all of the other bits you got from the last two starter sets because I don't need them anymore. And so the money I sold those for, I've been spending on dwarves um, and I've got a painted Mordor army. So it's just nice to have my collection. It's, it feels really nice getting some money off um money back for plastics I've been sitting on as a project I've wanted to do for ages but just not finding the time so it feels like I've just clicked my fingers and suddenly I've got a paint an army that I've painted but it's mine <laughs> so yeah cool little thing cool little thing to have yeah, um, I'll just I do love my Mordor army yeah, I'm going to be very sad when it goes but when it goes it's gonna go. yeah you're getting yeah, rid of it yeah it's being sold oh no but yeah I don't I don't, I don't use it um yeah. A, I want to. I want to do my Azog's Legion. Yeah. And do them properly, um, and then I'll keep some bits. But yeah, my Iron Hills, my uh, yeah, 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 my uh, Mordor and everything will go. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. To rationalise. Uh, so if anyone wants either of those armies, Mordor, yeah. Well, there you go. Then there you go. Just and it's a big Mordor army as well. I got rid of nicely them. painted. Yeah, it's very nicely painted. Yeah, this is you know, like yours. It's a lot of the similar stuff, I think. Very much, very, very similar in, in stuff because it was all the new characters mm. apart from those two that came out after I I did it. Um, I think yeah. the only thing that I got rid of that I will want to add will be a great beast. Um, yeah, I've but, got um, one of those in the uh, catapult. I had one and I got uh, and I got rid of it, but um, I will um, rebuy it when I want to paint it, so to speak. But yeah. Um, um, it's it's an iconic arm. It means now I'll be more enthused about at some point when I dip back in, and God knows when it'll be, maybe later this year, that I will, I've never done the Minas Tirith project for myself. And I've got the, the new starter set with, with that lot in the, the Faramir mm. side. So I will lean into that probably um, and, and do that. So anyway, that was cool. And then the final thing to talk about is um, I, at this point, it's not out yet, but it's not, private i don't think i've just got a notification on my phone i wonder if that is no it's something different um so jordan and i did a special um lords of the lance uh, when we read sorry a special books club when we read lord of the lance um and but it's special because we have graham and neil on to discuss the book with us um, which was cool. very very cool <laughs> all set up by all set up by jordan of course so rather than doing the normal gw books club when we just discuss the book and do a review we had a sort of three-way discussion and we just chatting with, with graham and asking some questions about the book and i'm not going to spoil because this is going out tomorrow i don't want to mm. discuss any of the, the things that that graham said in it really 
Um, but we did talk about the things that are topics. You know, the, the is the, he doing the, another Defenders of Ulthor? That's all I want to know. Yeah, we, Defenders we, of Ulthor and Sons of Illyrian. I want a third book now that we're back he, in he the old world. There's no, there's no news on anything new he's writing for obvious reasons. Um, but Those it, two and Storm of Iron are the best things he's ever written. In my opinion, I'm, my favourites is the 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 Hell and Hammer the Sigmar trilogy. I, I they are good, it. absolutely love it. But um, yeah, so I can't. I, I think it's coming out this week that book club. But that's Jordan's channel and his stuff. Mm. Um, and because he's not out, I can't discuss um any of the things that Graham said. But all I'll say is go and watch it when it's out. I'll be sharing it as well when Jordan does. Um, it's it's an hour's long, so it's nowhere near as long as one of these, and a bit shorter than the normal book clubs because obviously we had to interview graham etc um but he does discuss anyone's interested in the topics that are of that book the topics that are a little bit more and you know, people get upset about so the bretonian with bow knights with bows female knights with bows we talk about that we talk about some of the other themes in there as well so you get your answers to that stuff so anyone wants to know why that was different from the law watch watch it because he answers he's candid he will have a very good conversation about it also um, and just talk about the book in general about what the with processes and things that he goes through for writing so loads of fun I had loads of fun doing that um and really nice to be kind of part of doing a little sort of extra i think we'll do others as well i think we're going to dip into other books outside of gw books and do little specials once in a while I'm not always going to have authors on <laughs> i suppose but um it's very very cool but i don't want to talk too much about that because i want to talk about it but i can't because you know it's i don't want to spoil jordan's video before it's out but Go and watch it, people. Um, on that note, I think we should take... I mean, we're an hour and a half into this thing now. Sorry, is there anything else you wanted to mention there, Dan, before we well, take Well, I just wanted to mention, we, we we do have a... We did our live last time. Hopefully, mm. some people have uh, remained with us after watching that. <laughs> we are planning to do the next one. And it's off the back of a topic that's come up recently, off the back of uh, Goobertown Hobbies. Now, mm. Brent, he puts out... a. a sort of plethora of content he appeals to a very broad fan base i think the first time i uh came across his videos was during lockdown when he was talking about people's general angst and how they act on the internet and all that kind of stuff he's quite a chilled out individual and he was talking about 40k and in board gaming in general but specifically 40k about it no longer being for casuals yeah and i think that's a really interesting topic about um and it's something I found with 40k, and actually it's one of the reasons I stopped. It's because it, it there no longer seems to be a place for anyone who didn't play quite regularly. Yeah. So it's quite an interesting topic, and it's going to be the main topic of our next live stream, which we will announce. So mm. those of you who would be interested, please do join us if you've, you know, um, mm -hmm. sheathed your swords a little bit. It's, it's meant to be good-natured. I know this can be quite a, a, a contentious subject for some, particularly when a lot of you know without going too far into the topic and ruining it on this one there is like it, people can be very faction based on whether they're narrative or competitive or yeah there's yeah. a lot of people in the middle going oh my god i don't know people have got their anymore. own definition of what those things are yeah. as well so yeah 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 it's going to be really interesting i think we could probably open it up to it's a bit difficult now because aos is just about to launch a new edition but i think you can almost include aos in as yeah. part of the discussion and middle earth because mm -hmm. it's got a very competitive scene, but it's also probably the most narratively driven game that GW actually does. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I um, think there's some good examples across it all. So maybe we'll broaden it across yeah. those, but but it's kind of responding to that video and the Brent. topics in that yeah. video, Brent's video. So yeah, we're definitely going to do that. Um, and there will be more more announcements closer to time about that so we can get you in and involved and really like to get the chat involved in that and make it more yeah. than just Dan and I talk. Bit of interaction and we're lazy so yeah know, and we don't play 40 for we're really interested in the topic we don't play 40k <laughs> or AOS and that's going to be the two of the main factors we're talking about in, in, in there as well something else I completely forgot um, when we were talking about what I've been doing um, I also as you know painted the giant didn't I so yeah you um, look great so go and watch the video. Um, that was the other thing I, I managed to do. That was the first thing I edited on the new computer. Um, and, um, yeah, loads of fun doing it. So if you haven't seen the video for that, go and have a little look at that as well. And there's a little um, Graham McNeil um, connection 
to that one as well. Yes, and I enjoyed that. And you'll find that in the, the intro to the video. And if you've seen the short, you'll have heard that little section already because I, I ripped the sound from, from that already. But um, right, we'll take a very quick break and we'll be back to do what is quite, a, it's not even a main topic. We'll, we'll just talk about those uh, those miniatures that are leaving GW and the, the our thoughts on that and what that might mean for those games and for the old world as well. Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Baron of Dice, premium wargaming dice. Over 500 styles, over 4,000 customer reviews. Welcome to the best dice on the planet. And we're back, and um, this is the uh, the part of the show where where Dan hoped that we'd, we'd already covered and wanted to go to sleep. No, no, you're joking. So... <laughs> It's not a main topic. It's just a kind of continuation, really, of what we're talking about into the news. But we thought it was an interesting and enough to talk about um, and then separate from the news. Otherwise, our news would have been huge. But we're talking about what's leaving the the Age of Sigma range. And and it's Mm. a lot. Um, So we thought it was worth discussion. It's a few days after all of the channels have done all their crying, shouty videos. And and I can understand some people's upset. I'm not talking about the people that genuinely have complaints about stuff going or, or sadness about it is it's more the channels that like to hop on the back of the the, the news and outrage we're not going to do it that way we're just talking about it from a, from an interest no. point of view um but let's let's have a, a little look at what is going um as i get to the article up on the screen so what's leaving ages the age of sigma range um and it's it's quite a lot going i'm not going to read all of the stuff but we'll we'll start with the stormcasts um and it seems to me dan this is all the stuff from aos Soul first Soul edition Wars. and second edition is it the, you know the sacrosanct uh mostly i have to admit i my knowledge of aos is not great yeah um especially when it comes to stormcast because i'll be honest with you to the outsider they're just sea marines yeah um interestingly enough i have had it explained to me recently about some of the design philosophies and and uh some early conversations of wait a minute there's actually faces in there um yeah (laughs) yeah because they were designed they appear to be a very they have a different design aesthetic and uh, a different almost um well, let's be honest. That they gave them a personality. Now, um, yeah, they fleshed out the the realms of the Age of Sigma because when it first came out, as much as you know, some of the reactions to the Age of Sigma uh, knee jerk and a lot of emotive stuff because they nerfed, I think they blew up the old world, and so naturally people are going to be slightly cross about this. Fair enough, for for good reasons in a great majority of cases. Um, it was flat. It didn't have much life. Um. The general consensus appears to be that when they were first designed, it was kind of like choose your own adventure, fill your own gaps in. Yeah. Here's your here's your sand pit off your trot. Um, and they realised clearly that that just didn't work. So they introduced points, and they've started to flesh out all of the background. Everything's, and now I think going into probably going into this edition or third edition as we're coming out of into fourth, mm-hmm. they've fleshed out that uh, yeah, the I world. Agree. It feels lived in. It feels. Like, especially since Cities of Sigma has come out, as we've you said, and I've definitely said as well, um, they should have been the poster faction. If yeah. they'd have been around originally, I might have gone, oh, actually, when it, yeah, because originally it was what the um, Stormcast and the Corn dudes, yeah, yeah. This, uh, Cities of Sigma originally was just a way of using your old Warhammer yeah. Fantasy miniatures, and and yeah, we've, we've both said, I think, think to, for me, the key at the time would have been, I don't. I don't see the humanity in any of these, um, and that's just kind, of, just kind of the kind of factions that I naturally go for, um, mm. and that's that what was missing for me. Though I have had a, a, a few of these. If we go back to, back to the article, I did. I built and painted a two thousand point Stormcast army. You did, it would have been, yeah. um, and I did it in a much more gritty way. I quite liked the way it looked. I just wasn't going to play with it, so I sold it. Um, the the biggest shame. And I wish I still had now was the Carmine Dragon that I converted and put the put the Stormcast riding um, the Lord at the time because um, I wouldn't mind that dragon back, but I don't want any of the rest of it. But um, but yeah, so it, for me it looks like this was the range that I was shopping at the time. This this was before any of the newer, slimmer, taller mm. looking 
um, Liberators and, and all the rest of it came out. So these are fine. Um, I can I, I fully understand why these are going because I imagine most of these are going to come back in the new style. So this is like getting a, well, a new version of the sculpts. I'm sure some possibly, things will be missing. Possibly not. Um, I'll preface the way I feel about this. Um, possibly a couple of years ago, I might not have been sympathetic. Okay. Let's be honest, uh, people are only as sympathetic because their experiences allow them to be. And I was probably a little bit more militant about this stuff in the past. Um, I'll admit the the vampire cast thing is somewhat humbling and has made me approach things a bit more differently. Yeah. So I have the utmost um, sympathy and empathy for a lot of the people who are included in this because our armies are, in the main, something we invest ourselves into. They can often be the product of a lot of time and effort, money, if we're going to be honest about that as well. But also they may be representative of a time in someone's life, um, an escape from another situation. They 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 have more than just their tangible qualities. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. and there are people particularly and we'll probably come back to them, but the beast men, beasts of chaos, uh, have a very loyal, possibly not they're not as popular as many other armies, but they have a very loyal fan base. Um, including and uh, the chance of him actually w- watching this is a uh, is a guy who uh, lives in New Zealand and he goes by Eat Bray Love on uh, oh, Twitter yeah. or X or which I yeah. think is probably one of the best handles of any uh, I've ever seen, particularly for a wargaming account. Um, and he's bereft because uh, yeah. it's the only army he really plays. And there's an awful lot of people. It will be, particularly Beast Chaos players, because they're so passionate about it, it's pretty much the only army they do. Or they may have some Stormcast because everyone does, and suddenly they're gone too. There's, yes, there's, yeah. you know, I mean, you always hear the loudest voices, fair enough. Particularly in this world where we like to um, capitalise on uh, sensationalism. Mm-hmm. So people will retweet the, you know, the ones that are noisy and that kind of thing. People enjoy it. Misery loves company, all that kind of stuff. So, but it does seem to be this correlation where a lot of people are going, my entire collection's just been squatted is the word they're using because yeah. that, you know, anyone who's spent enough time in the hobby, that's always a <laughs> term for having your fun, army killed off. It's a funny phrase, isn't it? Because if anyone yeah. doesn't know what it's used, it's because there was an army of, of, of space dwarves before the, before the latest ones called squats yeah. and, and they were, they were yes, disappeared. Yes, still exist in Necromunda. Uh, yeah. They were eaten by Tyranids. Apparently, uh, but the, the leaves of Rotan have appeared, and they're not the same thing. No, they're not. Just no. It's like put a mustache on it. Uh, but so I, I, I get you, and I'm not. And I, I wouldn't at any point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm more likely, I suppose, to go along those lines in the past than you. I suppose. I think for me, the Stormcast. Until we know what's just getting new sculpts, there's a lot of this. I think they're yeah. just retiring the older aesthetic. I think most of this is down to the aesthetic. The newer ones yeah. are, 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 are modernised, they're taller, thinner. And skews, yeah. I don't know whether any of these unit types will completely disappear as well, but I don't know enough about AOS. So that'll be interesting to see. We won't know till we get the new stuff. We do know there's going to be lots of Stormcasts, and Stormcasts aren't going anywhere. And um, that's, I suppose, is one of the major differences with the uh, with the Beast, which is the, you know, which we'll cover a little bit yeah, better. Yeah. yeah, just just going. And that's probably the biggest news there. There are a few miniatures that I'm surprised, like the, the Adventist Firestrike miniature seems like, quite striking and, and, and new um some of the um i don't even know what they're called the evocators they seem quite cool models so um yeah i can imagine but a lot of them i'm not a huge fan of some of the older like the old liberators and stuff anyway so i imagine that much of these are just being updated just like when you get a new a new sculpt of of space marine lieutenant at the moment yeah. <laughs> primaries lieutenant I, th- I think um what's been said by GW and, and conveniently ignored by some parties, let's be honest, is a lot of these aren't necessarily going, they're coming back in a new form, but you can use the new cards with your old models because of they're the same can. thing. Yeah, of course you um, can. And then I think what they've also, t- I think one of the principal problems is once again, this is an idea that's been horrendously communicated. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, uh, what did they say? Um, enjoy Gawella in retirement. That's yeah. just, you yeah. might as well just chuck petrol on that. Um, 
that's not going to make anyone feel any better, so, uh, is it? It's, you know, it's, it might as well say he's gone to live on a farm. Yeah, he's, I've I've seen a few comments it's, based around that. He just just which, he's... given the beastman connotation with the goats, is even worse. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah and yeah. then you know you've got, uh, uh, I think one they timed it badly because if people knew what new models were coming, maybe if they'd done this later, they wouldn't feel so bad because it if the people would go, oh, I can just use. So they know what the gaps truly are. The whole point is no one really knows what no may or may not come moment. back. Yeah, that makes um, sense. That's it's, it's like to give people or, time as well or let them know why these are disappearing from the store. Yeah. Whereas if the they went is, for a system where they left it, people were buying them, and then the very mm. next week people complain about that as well. So for the Stormcast... They're damned um, if they do and damned if they don't. But yeah, they this, immediately go, this is effective immediately. So anything that was out of stock at yeah, that point remains forever. So no one has a chance. And then... Obviously, the first thing that happens is anyone who can twig on who's remotely inclined to be a scalper has gone in and bought as much as possible, yeah, sold it out, and it's now on bloody eBay for loads of money. You, you can't remove that problem because whenever you announce no. it, no matter how much notice, it gives the opportunity for people to 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 do that. Of, um, of course, it so does. Or maybe you, just I don't know MTO how you get, it. I don't. Yeah, maybe, but they haven't got. They can't build stuff for that. I I. I don't know how else they could do it with the Stormcast stuff. I think it's slightly different depending on what mm. we're talking about here. Um, and the Beasts of Chaos are different. But I think in terms of the Stormcast, I think it's mostly different. It'd be interesting whether that how many unit types aren't covered again. Let's move on to the Skaven anyway. Um, and there's obviously a lot here. And we know what. We know the worst kept secret in, in in GW life for probably the last 12 months, it feels like, is AOS 4 and stormcast which we know is always going to be stormcast and skaven and we've we've seen miniatures we've already been talking about this early in 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 the show as well um and yeah and we and there's a lot going here an awful lot going so we've got the old clan rats going the acolytes the water fire flow the rattling guns so those are the old metal or maybe they're in fine cast now kits as well they're not even the the um the 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 eighth edition set are they um the plastics that came on the, the sprue with the same sprue as the high elves um gutter runners are really old as well swarms master molder there's, there's a lot here what i what i'm encouraged by is apart from things like the gisales and and, and the warp grinders none of the big kits are there at the moment so i'm still hopeful that you're your big centerpiece kits are still going to be part of Age of Sigma from an yeah. old world point of view because it means that if you can use the yeah. new clan rat miniatures we've already looked at um, and the Doom Wheel and the... the Screaming Bell. The Screaming Bell, that's a double kit. If those are still part of it, and it looks like they are because they're not mentioned here. Um, and help it as well. And the help, help it. Yeah. But I think that would be something that I'd expect them to replace anyway. But that says to me, and rat ogres might be replacing those rat ogres. Let's face it, they were looking pretty derpy, weren't they? Um, they weren't good when they released those. To be fair, no, no. To be fair, there might, there, there's going to be some holes. I'm, I'm thinking now purely with the lens of old world here. If you wanted to build an old world army, clan rats, we know we sorted. We've seen them already. The the weapons teams could be an issue, um, and they're going to go for a lot on eBay, and they'll con continue going for a lot on eBay because. As mentioned earlier in this this podcast, I don't think we're going to see the... I think the way the old world's going, I think that we will see a second edition and I think they're going to bring back some of these factions. I would I would be more confident now than I was right back at the beginning. Who knows for sure, but I think that, that I think we can be confident that it's a good hope. Um, but I, I can't see it for years now. And we don't even know this may be the first faction. So we could be talking five or more years before some of these get brought back for the old world um that means getting hold of skaven weapons teams could be really hard um but i think there's enough looking at those new models and there's enough left in the range in terms of those big expensive kits that there's a good chance of building a, a skaven army so i'm, I'm hopeful mm hopeful let's move on anyway because we know we know that those eventually we hope they're going to come to old world but it's not going to be soon whereas the bone splitters um or savage orcs as they used to be called or savage uruks here um that i'm not so sure what's going to happen with these um do you think that he's going to be moved into the old world dan or do you think they're going to be gone so i don't know if you know that there's no separate rules for for savage orcs now no, it's not. 
you've just got you just got orc mobs, which is I think a smart way of doing it in one sense. It's a problem when people start messing around with um, comp and start limiting things with like the rule of three. It works really well to stop people taking more than three units of chosen or something like that. But if you start limiting people to to three units well, of of orcs, and that means they can't take one savage or one normal orc, that's when you start having issues. But do you think that these are being gone completely gone because they're too worried about the connotations of savage and the way they're dressed? Do you think there's any? Well, I, I think potentially sensible political decisions made there. I didn't tell you I was going to go down that route with that, but I think it's um. I think it's interesting. Well, that uh, might say something about me as an individual, but I never even thought about that. Um, I just uh, wonder, because they'd already, I think it's one of the, I don't mind either way, be very clear, I don't, but some people, it's modern, you wouldn't pick that name now. You wouldn't, you wouldn't call something savage and, and the way they look, um, be tribal in that in that kind of way you'd be a little bit more sensitive to your designs you wouldn't make that kind of design thing now i see them just as savage orcs but um the market's yeah. changing and people buying them now um have very different sensibilities than when they were designed what 40 years ago these miniatures obviously aren't 40 years old but um it's, it's maybe they'll just come back and be badlands tribes i i hope like. they just come back as 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 yeah Slightly change, slightly change the name as, as Orc Boys. So I hope they go into the old world. But there is a little bit of me that says, because Games Workshop does play uh, careful now, and I understand it's a it's a tricky world to, to, to live in. Um, we, we're making sure that you don't upset people. Um, and it might well be that you just go, look, it just, it's just easy to just get rid of them, isn't it? It's possible. So it was just, uh, I'm just putting it out there. I wonder if we don't see them again because of that. I think if they're not worried about that and they and, and then they don't think that's an issue, especially based on the name, then um, then hopefully we'll see them in the old world because I know a lot of people really, really well, like them. They probably haven't made the money back on the Blooming Frames yet. So if they can sell some stuff off the back of I'm it. I'm sure with some not? of these they have. They've been out quite a while. Quite a while. Well, I, you don't see many armies of them though. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. Never have done. So maybe so, they might just. Well, they're old fantasy there. models, aren't they? Most of them. I think Jacob's um, shaman and his army is the uh, the war donk one. I think um, mm. savage Oruk war donk. Obviously, I'm looking at him. It's on the screen. You're you're not down, but um, no. And then you got the no, savage Oruk no. ball boys. A lot of them are very old plastics as well. So, um, or, or at least even if they were brought out in, some of them maybe come out in 8th edition, but even then they're still getting old now. So anyway. Yeah, I think they were late fantasy, most of the stuff that um, you talk about. Certainly the um, the war boss that's popular for that. I know there are a few people who are already using that for... Yeah, um, he's newer. He's newer, you can tell by the, the picture of the, the base with them as well. There's the head rackers, mad mob or something like that, whatever that is. But anyway. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I, I hope they end leave up in, the names, certainly. I, I, stay with. <laughs> I hope that they end up in, in the old world, but I just thought, I wonder, because you know, they're not really named in the new rules and they're not in any of the imagery, I wonder if they'll just let them go, but we'll see. And then we've got, this surprised me, um, Slaves to Darkness stuff. Now, it doesn't surprise I've, me in the sense that we've got l new Dark Oath coming out. Um, and you know, beautiful miniatures they are. But what surprises me about this, Dan, is that apart from um, Kagra's Ravagers, which was an Underworlds war band, I think, wasn't it? Um, Originally. Uh, the rest is all Warcry stuff. And I this... think this is just... Um, I think this is rule support, not models. Yes. I think this is a case of um, Warcry, I can't see going anywhere because it's quite popular. It's also a good way of introducing models into the market. Um, but I think, to be honest, um, they kind of made a rod for their own back, letting people take all of the Warcry warbands in their Age of Sigmar armies, particularly yeah. with the, um, Chaos, because there's so bloody many of there them. There's too many, yeah. And they're just sinking a lot of time and effort into right, keep, keep, keeping on trying to balance all this stuff in the rule system. Yeah. So they're going to do it once forever and then it will just stay in war cry you just won't be able to use them competitively i, I, I hope they stay in war cry um it's just the the wording of it isn't 100 percent clear so with the arrival of dark host the slaves to darkness we have finally found great. their definitive mortal followers this means that a number of war bands representing the wider worshippers of chaos in the mortal realms will be retiring from the spotlight and the range that's the bit 
that's the and the range bit is the from the age of sigma and it's range, hyphenated as well um the, yeah hopefully this mostly involves war bands from the previous edition of war cry as well as cargo's ravages and from warhammer underworlds and they all get legends war scrolls so everything there i agree um it's the and the range bit because if it is all going from war cry as well that is that's 10 war cry war bands gone crazy i'm glad anyway some I'm glad of the better I'm, ones as well yeah some of the beautiful miniatures so maybe that's not the case maybe they'll stay in in war cry but we were talking in the last video about what a what a wonderful place they are to mine for your for your chaos armies and um, lots of really beautiful sculpts so i'm glad i picked up my spy, spy tyrants but anyway it'd be interesting what people think about that um and whether they think it's or whether they know maybe they've expanded elsewhere whether they know whether they're sticking around in war cry or just like you said it's just the rules that's been from aos which i actually agree with it makes sense it sounds like far too much confusion and bloat right so now we move on to the biggie, Dan. We're on to the Beasts of Chaos, which you already sort of talked about at the beginning. Um, and this was this was huge for the reasons you've said. Uh, this is the this is not a kind of trimming it's down the chaos position. range. This isn't it's the ridiculous. updating the the um, stormcast. This is right. We're just getting rid of Beasts of Chaos completely from Age of of Sigma. And is this the first time they've done this properly? I, I don't know. I know there were factions at the beginning of Age of Sigmar which are technically led almost legend from the beginning. Um, yeah, Chaos is, Dwarfs. Um, okay, so but yeah, and I think even things like um, you could play anything at the beginning, couldn't you? There was Didn't there's rules. There's men. rules. Uh, Weren't lizard men originally not in it? Seraphon uh, were they? I can't remember. I thought there was there rules were a while for everything. A book, though. There were well, yeah, but there was lots of things that never had a book. What I mean is there was mm. at the beginning there was the the free legended. Bretonian rules for when when AOS launched that you could use every Warhammer model in it, um, but I wonder is this the first faction that's kind of grown into its own? Had books, had well, Vanguard Beast of Chaos box. You know that's fairly mm. fairly recent, isn't it? The last couple of years is this the well, first the one? Beast Lord, which is an amazing model. Yeah, is that is that out yet, or is that one that they sh they show that was never released? No, that's been out for ages. Is um, it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's been out for about two, nearly two, two years. years. I knew it was twenty two. Speaking of James Tower, actually, um, he got a, a pin um, at the Orwell Open Day with his. With his, that was one. his in the cabinet. Ah, well, there you are then. So, what I mean from an old world point of view, looking forward to seeing this all back on square basis. But I'm not, wouldn't be so flippant as to I, um, enjoy people who who love these. I mean, there are many people who have moved them from squares onto rounds and are now moving them back to squares. And maybe they were doing it even before um, this was announced anyway because they want to play Old World. But I, I also appreciate there are people who have taken up Age of Sigmar since, you know, they weren't around for yeah. fantasy that just love this faction for what it is in itself as an AOS thing. And it's yeah, I don't, that, I feel... But... I feel feel bad for them. Maybe they, they may just only play with their mates. They may only play Age of Sigma. They may not even have any interest in rank and flank. They may just want to play Sigma. Yeah, I don't I, I don't like the whole let's see the wording on it. Um the Beast of Council leaving Age of Sigma, but they'll be back in the future, or rather the past. Yes, the beastmen are returning to our old feeding grounds of the world of legend of Warhammer. Yeah, that's that's not the, the problem way to, is that's not the way were. to sell it. Yeah, the, no, exactly. That is not the way they to sell the nine this. Armies. And actually, this is only going to hurt that for a while because if they're going to take them immediately out of range, it means no one can buy the AOS models. Yeah, AOS models ready to build their beast. Yeah, man and they army. They, they don't care about Robot. that though. Clearly, do they? They they they, no, they, 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 they there's, a, there's a huge pretense that that's not happening, even though it clearly is. If you look at the you look well, at any Age of Sigmar miniatures that were fantasy miniatures before and or they're sold out could, all the time yeah it's just constantly sold out and i reckon there's a good chunk of those that are going to square bases um it's, well you can yeah. buy soul blight kits again now yeah yeah but there's a there's a there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that's missing out there you they didn't even before old world law, um, launched you saw the empire kits were stripped out of the cities of sigma while they still existed there the dwarves have been in and out of stock for ages people are buying them for for, for this so it, it it's, well, it's, I think the uh, what was it? The Pistoliers get on getting being bought by Chris Peach for his bloody army. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to pull the plumes for his uh, probably yeah. For his, but uh, um, I, I just yeah, I, I don't know what else to say really. I just got the utmost sympathy with for anyone 
it sucks. excuse me who who plays AOS and and has had this sort of taken away from them. Um, but what a way to do it on this Thursday! I mean, imagine that being your being your Thursday. I mean, yeah. it's bad enough when we. Uh, I mean, the vampire counts thing. I mean, it's, it's still it still bugs me <laughs> even now, and it's what nearly six months on. Yeah, I, um, I, I, don't, yeah, I don't know what to say to people. It's, it's gutting. I, they'll have a good reason for doing it, and maybe they really didn't. Maybe it was the lowest selling. They'll have had all con. There would have been conversations around it. It's, um, and it would have been interesting to know whether they did sell a lot less. Whether it was a problem. Um, it feels weird that it's just this one faction. Um, mm-hmm. if they were going to go yeah. for a slim down, but I suppose if you look at the chaos side and the amount of models from all of those dark oath was under the heading dark oath, but that wider chaos, um, faction. There's probably more miniatures there than there are actually in this section in terms of individual I'd scops. rather see Beastmen in the world, though, than... Mm, as yeah, much as I'm really excited about Dark Oath, yeah. there's a part of me that still embraces the traditional um, chaos, you know, mm. Slaves to Darkness and all that. I agree. Beastmen have more place than Dark Oath do. They're just yeah. marauders. Yeah. Whereas Beastmen are... Oh, Kaz, and they're supposed to be everywhere. They live in all of the dark forests. And for, me, for me, they, they go they're, hand they're they go hand in hand, and it's all, it's all, yeah. Similar. But, but traditionally, like beast men, haven't always traditionally just been the whole cloven feet, and they're there to represent hybrid oh, animal. Yeah, uh, yeah. You origin, know, you know, original men and all ori- sorts of exactly, stuff. Exactly. It, well, the books I've been reading with Jordan, all that GW books club, beast men meant yeah. just meant different back then, but mutants, mutants essentially. But yes, um, sad. I'm glad we're going to see it in our world. Um, I don't know what else but to we say. We always really. were, so we've not really gained anything. If anything, you just can't access the models anymore. So no, for anything, right. it's worse. the old world's poorer for it until we finally get them, and we're always getting them anyway. So everyone loses. Yeah, I don't. Know. I don't know what the the, the deal is there, but um, I I kind of get they have their reasons for it. I think you know, slimming down the the factions and the bloats makes sense. But um, yeah, if it's your faction, it is going it, to hurt. It smacks of internal factionalism within GW. I'm honest with you, on the back of what they did with the legacy armies for the old world, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't make good enough sense to me, I'll be honest. Particularly, the, the, and the way they've handled it, it, it is wrong. The marketing, who yeah. ever thought that was a good idea? Who signed that off? The, the, light-hearted, the light-hearted text on it just, just doesn't, doesn't. It, it needs to be a little bit more. There's no empathy in that at all. That it's so he's going. I appreciate. Um, um, there's a very much a thing, and it's become very much in the corporate lexicon about having tone of voice. Uh, like Lego, everything's like an eight-year-old child. It's always worded yeah. for that. Um, all that kind of stuff. I appreciate GW tries to strike a a, a corporate tone in all of its messaging. Um, uh, always like slightly overexcited puppy. Seems to be the way I look yeah. at it. Um, it works when it's something posi- It works when it's a positive message. I don't think it works yeah. when you when you. It, it should just be honest and say we realise this is going to disappoint some people, um, but we have to review our ranges and we have to look at what's popular and and sometimes the range grows too big and just use that kind of language. People still will be upset, but making a, a flippant or well, you can go and play it on and in a different game system, um, which is in a microcosm is what it felt like for many fantasy players the other way around when the whole game was taking away but well, it is this is there's a is a, there's an element it's only been to eight it. years though is it's it, i mean that there is um is there, it, there has been i've seen those comments that it seems to have come full circle no, uh no you know. i'm not i'm not so i haven't seen those comments i can guess them that's not the point i was trying to make there the point I was oh no 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 is that i don't i don't think this has happened with a main faction that's had full book support since no. the game Became. ended um so I, that's yeah. what i mean i think that that in terms of that's how people felt of their back their own thing their own individual army oh the game i want to play is gone well, the game is still there but they have to change the faction so it's not quite the same but it's it's similar in that sense so yeah um i'm sure they've got good reasons for doing it but um i don't like the way they announced it if they've got to do it because for business reasons as well they're a corporate business we know they are and they're not always going to make decisions we like but I think the way they've gone about it wasn't the best. Um, and then we've got a few little extras left. Um, so a handful of other miniatures going off sale and receiving Legends Wall Scrolls. Wall scroll. So we have Sylvaneth Branch Wraith. Um, I can imagine that that will reappear in for what else? 
I, I, I think. Mm. Um, saw a Tony Warden won't go anywhere <laughs> because uh, uh, again, that's it's just one individual model. They've obviously updated that range, haven't they? You got Valka the bloody. Um, you got the Skyler thing, which again was a, a big beast, I think, from Warcryish. Oh, Scylla. Is it Scylla? Yeah, yeah. Scylla. I've, well, I've heard it pronounced a couple of different oh, ways. This the is first the time I've ever, uh, yeah, It's the first time I've ever yeah. read the name out loud. So, yeah, you are probably far more right looking at it. And then we've got um, a Mistweaver against okay, so like one of the Lumineth models, I think. Uh, okay, it's just they're clearly not selling these ones. They're not needed in the range, so they're just not selling and and, and replaced well, with even the rebooted uh, Scylla and what's um, the, the that's the woman with the wings and the spear, isn't it? The, from it's Chaos Cil- Warriors, Scylla's not no. It's like no, the piece. the one before uh, Valka the Bloody. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, she's got a spear. Yeah, yeah. I remember those models, and they were Storm of Chaos era, if I remember okay. rightly. Well, there we go. Or not long after. So maybe. That will come back with the Kukuma Old World Warriors. Old World Warriors well, Chaos no, range. they're both named characters. They're Were both they? oh, very. Okay. Then probably maybe, not them. Maybe Scylla. Mm. Can't see it. And then you've got um, two we could see. So you've got the big boss on Giant Spider. I imagine that could come back for Old World. And then you've got the Madcap Shaman as well, which potentially could move over to Old World. But they've, you know, they've. they've those aren't anything I would say that was particularly um, stand out or in important. Um, but um, yeah, those. Yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about those ones too much. To be honest with you, I think those little extra ones are are things that aren't going to cause too many ripples. Um, your person might run out and want, wish they could get a particular sculpt, but. Uh, yeah, nothing too much to worry about. And that's kind of it, really. But it was more like kind of just talking about the way the way Games Workshop have handled it um, and um, the interest from the old world side of things, obviously from the uh, Beast of Chaos. Yeah. It was interesting. I don't think the Slaves of Darkness affects anything because it's all the Warcry stuff. The Skaven, really interesting because I was really concerned that it, the whole range would be updated and I'd update the big stuff. It does look like... It's going to be difficult to build an old world army, but I feel like with those clan rats being the right size, and it looks like some of those other big kits, the newer kits, the eighth edition kits, sticking around, would say to me that we can still do it. Not that I've got a Skaven army planned, maybe at some point in the future. Um, after, after, oh yeah, they will. They'll be done. No, no, I'm not going to win any Skaven for ages yet. But what I mean is, is once once dwarves and empire are done, um, I'm not interested in. Wood elves or high elves. I'm not going to be. I'm not interested in any of the other factions. Um, so I would be looking at doing a legacy army then at that point. And Skaven is one I've never done. So, but I'm not going to turn that into a conversation now. So I was just going to be gutted if that was taken away from me in terms of having to go pure eBay on it. Would have been really, really painful. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I will be finishing my current armies and for sure. But um, yeah, that was that was that really. Let it'd be interesting in what people think. Um, and what people think of us not doing a, a topic and just doing a really long rambly one, but um, it's good just to chat and hope that people have had this on in the background while they're doing some hobby or something or other. Um, we'll probably try and make you make the next one that live you mentioned um, just yeah. before the break. Um, if something happens or other, we want to talk about something else. You never know, there might be some news or something, or we think oh, let's do a hobby hour for it. Then we, we that might change, but I think the plan will be the next one to be to la- do a live one. It may even be the end of the month now. Um, <laughs> I've got a live stream plan on the 18th, um, and that week's looking full, so it'd be the week after that at the at the earliest. So, but Dan and I will get a date out, get a date planned in. Um, and get that advertised out to, to you guys, and we'll put it in the in the Discord as well. So, anyway, Dan, have you got anything else you want to say before we end this? No, as always, <laughs> long um, rambling. Thanks for watching. Thing. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Join the Discord if you haven't already. There's some specific channels for this, so you can ask us one to ask us questions, one to just sort of general chatter about any of the shows we do. Um, and then yeah tune in for the next one which will be live when we'll, we'll be hopefully have lots of people engaged talking about whether um, 40k AOS and I suppose Middle Earth a little bit is more designed for 
competitive output now than the, than it used to be. Should be a good topic. Anyway, thanks very much. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you.